the devastation spread. Playing on the internet too much, right? A world beyond our own. Why is this patient in lockdown? They didn't tell you about Laurie Strode, sister of Michael Myers. She decapitated a man. Why? Oh my God, she killed the wrong person. Why didn't the paramedics say something? His larynx had been crushed. I would have preferred just to see him sewing his decapitated head back on. We're in. They picked all three of us. We're gonna be bigger than the Osbournes. They're exploring the house of mass murder. Live. You wanna watch? Don't do it. That's the house where it all started. Just like me anyway. I ain't telling you to be Michael Myers. I'm playing Michael Myers. That was so fake. That really just happened. She was just killed. I so did not sign up for this. Oh, yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> Some digital effects. Go to the other camera. Tell her he's coming up the stairs. This isn't funny anymore, guys. Trick or treat, motherfucker. He's been living underneath this fucking house for who knows how long. Probably the last 20 years. Looking a little crispy over there, Mikey. Like some chicken fried, motherfucker. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. The bitter and the sweet. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. The bitter and the sweet. Hi, I'm Spice Williams Crosby from Fatal Games, and you are listening to Hysteria Continues. And indeed you are. Welcome to Hysteria Continues uh, episode, and I actually have no idea what episode we're on. That's because... one thirty. One thirty. that's because it is a drunk cast. We are, and the, yes. bar, the bar is now open, so a little, mm. bit, little bit of background music. Um, yeah, we decided to have a little drunk cast for a number of reasons, really. Um, it was uh, One is that because of our scheduling conflicts, we're actually recording this um, late into the evening over on the UK and Irish side, and um, uh, early evening on your side? Early, very early evening for them. They have no excuse to be drinking this early. It's no. five o'clock somewhere. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere. Right here. Yeah. It's five o'clock here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, because we're, for, and the other reason we're drinking, of course, is we're covering um, um, Halloween Resurrection. Um, of course, when we if we ever do get round to the next two Halloween films, we'll probably need something stronger we like heroin no. or or Please. crystal Please. meth or something. But <laughs> we will, or sort of arsenic, maybe I don't know. Um, but at the moment, uh, what is your poison of choice, uh, Nathan? What have you been drinking? I drank a couple of Moscow Mules, and I am drinking a glass of wine. Oh, very at sophisticated. The That's very red or white. Um, it's pink. Oh, rosé. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, it's it's um, what we like to call over uh, in these parts cardboard dough because it comes in a cardboard, cardboard box. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, wow, that's, that's, that's very classy. <laughs> Eric, are you enjoying... Uh, very classy. Are you, uh, are you, Eric, are you enjoying a stiff one tonight? I am enjoying a stiff one as well, and a very classy stiff one. I can now class uh, Nathan because I'm having vodka with... Cherry Pepsi Max. Wow. You know, yeah. there was vodka in my Moscow mules. <laughs> well, it is, I uh, say, so keeping the class up. And um, Joseph, what are you drinking? I'm having a nice snifter of warm poir, William. What's that? What? Ew. Um, actually, I'm just drinking Purple Haze. I'm a lightweight. It's beer or lager. It's, oh ras- it's, it's raspberry beer. Ooh. Oh, that makes you a girl. That makes you a bit of a well, girl, actually, yeah. It's like a stout. I don't know what they call it, a stout. I don't no, drink but, but because much. it's a fruity flavor, it means that you must be fruity, too. Well, it tastes like beer. I'm going to pour it on your head. Ooh. Very long arms. That'll be quite an talk, interesting thing, you know, you talk since about he's in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully this hey, one... Hey, listen, dis- listen to this. Listen to this. I'm so it's drunk. Like a, it's like a sea shanty. It's, yeah. Eric, you are uh, sorry. Not. Joseph's Pipes of Peace. Yeah, but uh, but um, anyway, you wouldn't mind smoking that. I'm I'm oh. uh, I'm the classiest of the lot because I'm drinking a dry vodka martini. Um, oh. Actually, a dirty oh. martini. So you you, you slipped what? out of your wet clothes into a dry martini. Well, I'm drinking. It's a dirty martini. Do you know what a dirty martini is? 
It's got opposite poo of in a clean. It hasn't got poo in it. No, Eric, don't bring in. Oh my goodness, bring in the, bring the tone down of this podcast. What you, you bust the Toilets are funny. No. He just Justin could have had like ten martinis, and he would still sound um, like he does yeah. during a normal television show. Well, not television show. <laughs> Pod- well, that's, what, what is this thing we do? Podcast. Yes. That's what happens when you drink twenty four seven. You just kind of get a tolerance. Yeah, your system for it. gets used to it. Well, yeah. to be honest, I, not, I don't know, this, this is the first oh my drink. God. <sighs> That was disgusting. It is disgusting. It's a carbonation. With Joseph. Oh my God. Carbonation. People don't don't <sighs> tune in for this kind of um this kind of thing. Anyway, a dirty martini anyway, is, there, is, is there when a you poo in your martini. No, no. A dirty martini is when you pop a couple of olives in and a bit of the brine water from the olive juice. Ew. Um, and it's a, it's, I'd rather have a poo in this. Do you eat nice, olives, actually. Justin? Do I eat olives? Yes. Yeah. Do you just eat them? But what do you think I do with them? Well, just like you might just put them in your drink, but not eat them. Oh, no, I eat them when I get to the bottom because then they've soaked up the vodka. Oh, yeah, of course. You can't waste a drop of that. Exactly. No. It's a lovely little savoury drop at the bottom of the I imagine, I imagine uh, Justin, you're kind of like oh. Sean Ryder because he famously um, dropped some cocaine on the floor in an airport or something and he ended up licking it off the floor. I imagine that's what, like you with uh, vodka. Or oh, any wow. Wow. That, no, no, that's... I mean, all, all I've had is literally, actually, vodka martinis are very, very strong, and I do make them quite strong, but this is the first drink I've had today, so um, I've been... I'm, I'm a professional, and I'm only drinking to keep Nathan company. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Because I was like, we advertise this thing as a drunk cast, so I'm like, I actually did pre-drink, and now well, I feel terrible because... Well, I'm don't feel alone. The, I'm, the alcohol's hit it. The alcohol's hitting me as well, so you're not... Yeah, the alcohol's hitting me as well. If you've not heard me say the word poo about seven times already. Yeah. Yeah, but that's normal. Hey, listen, I'm going to take a that's drink true. right now. Oh. God, it's like Homer so, yeah, Simpson. Drink. Um, normally, I'm out of drink. Obviously, I'm normally... A I cigarette. Only... Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, you're having a cigarette? No. No. But I said it was. Mm. Well, normally, the only thing that touches my lips is communion wine once a week on the Sunday. But yeah. um, I thought I'd make a. a, a, a you do not a, go to church. I do every Sunday. Yeah, I'll go to the church Alice Sweet Alice went to. <laughs> well, I used to because I was I was brought up Catholic. I went at first Holy Communion and all that all that crap. Are you a lapsed one now? I'm very lapsed. Are you a lapsed? So I got a question for you, Justin. Hmm. You you were brought up Catholic. Um, wh- whilst you were brought up Catholic, did you? Uh, did you believe in God, or did you just go along with it because it was something your family did? Well, no, to be honest, there was um, there, when I realised um, there were two reasons I realised that it was all a load of bollocks. One was that outside the church, I'm so old that they used to do masses in Latin, and um, I came out and there was all these women stood outside bitching about another woman. I thought that was very odd because we've been told it was all about love and forgiveness. And then the other reason I knew it was a load of bollocks was the our um, deputy head, I think it was Mrs. Granger, or was that Grange Hill? No, Mrs. I think it was Miss Granger. She said she prayed to Jesus because she lost her car keys and then she found them because she opened the drawer <laughs> and they were, they were in her drawer by her, on her desk. And I thought, that, that didn't really happen. So after that, I was a confirmed But well, you've atheist. got no proof that, that Jesus didn't intervene in that scenario. Did well, you? that's true. Oh, he doesn't have the burden of proof. I, I no. know, but um, it did push me over the edge. So I kind of decided then I was probably didn't really believe in God. But uh, but anyway, this isn't uh, the John Paul this Sartre is very serious existentialist. Yeah, well, you can especially tell Joseph is drunk, bringing up topics like that. Joseph, what? this is not like you. <laughs> Justin brought it up. Yeah, well, you you asked him about yeah, you, when did he like realize he was an atheist? You well, know when I realized he was it talking about lapsed Catholics. Yeah. Although I should probably mention that uh, now that I've had some drinks and I still have more, you might actually see an Inga and me today. <laughs> oh, are you mean? Are you a mean drunk? You, uh, want, to, you yes. want to have Inga inside. You're a rude one, I'll tell you that. But yeah. are you a mean one? You've seen me drunk. Uh, you tell me. Are you being I don't remember. I was tonight, drunk too. Joseph. Next thing I know, we woke up and our movies were all over the floor and the shelves had all fallen down. <laughs> and your clothes. <laughs> Uh, did you say and our clothes? No. Yes, I did. I never had a naked moment. Thank you. Well, <laughs> the night is still yet young. So anyway, well, before we, here. well, before, <laughs> obviously this is also a Halloween show, so we are um, going to be coming on to the joys, or or maybe not of Halloween Resurrection, um, a little bit later. Um, but before we do that, should we have a little chat in time on the tradition before it all goes a little bit south? Um, 
uh, about what we've been watching recently. So, um, Joseph, before you you kind of pull down the shelves, uh, do you want to tell us what you've been watching recently? Sure. Um, well, obviously, I've been watching Ash vs. Evil Dead, the second season. Um, I'm not going to spoil much of it for people who haven't seen it, but uh, I'm really impressed with the second season so far. Um, probably more so than the first. Uh, in particular, in the second episode, they kind of outrival something like uh, uh, someone like Brian Usna's Society. There's a similar scene in the second episode that's just so outlandish and very disgusting. Um, it was quite, you know, spectacular to watch. Uh, but, you know, so far it's been a really fun season. Uh, Bruce Campbell's in fine form as always. Just a fun show. And I still, you know, I still love that it's, uh, you know, each episode's about 20 minutes, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. Just, uh, you know, I think everyone should be watching this. It's just a great show. I've still not seen any of them, but uh, I will get around to it eventually. Mm, okay. I've been watching season two as well, and I, I am. I would be in agreement with Joseph. I am enjoying it, and um, Lee Majors is in there as well, playing Bruce. Yeah, Cameron, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. they very short? Um, Are but, they very short? Hmm? Sort of. They're only about half an hour long, or something. Uh, yeah, they're half an hour long, I suppose. And with an ad break, they're, so they come in about twenty-seven, twenty-six minutes or so. So, so it's a real yeah, kind of like candy, candy sort of sugar rush kind of like short. Burst. It is completely, and and the plot is not in any way sophisticated or in depth or anything. It really is uh, gag laden, much like the movies were. So, mm. um, yeah, so it's not something that you have to intensely follow and it's not going to stimulate the intellect or anything, but uh, it's great fun. And that scene you were mentioning about that rival society is disgusting. Yeah. But very, but very, but very funny. Yeah, yeah so, it's very, it's hilarious. I, I laughed out loud. Is it um, like your, your dates, Eric? Gag laden. <laughs> well, they were they they would be gaggly. No, they they gag a lot because of my uh, <laughs> enor Aww. enormous member. Oh, so I lined you up for that one, Eric. I hope you thank me. You did, yeah. Raise a little glass <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, sip my ch cherry Pepsi and vodka mm. because I'm sophisticated and shit. Well, that's all. That's all good. Yes. So, um, Joseph, you've been watching anything else? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, I watched a show on Hulu called Freakish. Um, it's basically uh, these teenagers have to spend Saturday in detention, kind of like the Breakfast Club. And basically there's a an explosion at this nearby chemical factory that just basically sends this kind of toxic cloud in the air and turns people into kind of like 28 days later, you know, rabid I guess you'd call them zombies, although people argue that those aren't zombies in that film. But anyway, and, you know, they descend upon the school and, you know, all hell breaks loose. Uh, it's a I think it's 10 episodes. They're all about about 25 minutes long, like Ash versus Evil Dead. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot of slow parts. Uh, it starts out a little cheesy, but it gets really, you know, really fast paced and entertaining. And towards the end, it gets a little dark. Uh, but, you know, um, what I really liked about the show is that the characters are really well developed in a short period of time. Um, there's a lot of, you know, ghoulish, you know, scenery to kind of go along with the, the nice characters, even the characters who are portrayed as assholes are likable. So I mean, it's a fun show. It, you know, it's 10 episodes long, uh, you know, 20, 25 minutes each, uh, just, uh, just all around fun. You know, I'm kind of sick of the whole zombie thing, but you know, for my money, this is totally better than something like the walking dead. Um, I don't know if you two in in uh, Europe have Hulu, but if you do, check this out. It's called Freakish. It's quite good. I, I think Nathan's seen it. I did watch it. So what did you? It think? was like really good. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, I, I like you it. sound like a valley girl, <laughs> doesn't it? Nathan sounds like a valley girl. Was, you know, you know, it was. I've only seen a few episodes, but I pre-drank. I'm so sorry. That's He's all right. So it was really, really good. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm maintain. Let's just maintain. Let's just pretend to be not drunk. Um, it was a very good film. Not film. It was a very good TV show. Yeah. Um, nice. And I recommend it. And I've only seen like three episodes so far, but I thought they were really, really good. Um, it's very fast paced. Like it's like you'll start watching an episode and it's like over before you know it. And I probably would binge watch it, but we've got so many other shows we're watching right now here at my house. So, you know, I guess I'm just a TV junkie, but I'm trying to pepper it in so one I don't other, lose it too fast. One other thing I should mention is that I, I guess around the halfway point of the show, it kind of like 
um, you know, rather than focusing on like a lot of like zombies or whatever they are, uh, it, it for like a short period of time, it kind of focuses on one particular threat. So it feels almost like a slasher movie with these people getting picked off one by one. So, uh, you know, I really enjoyed that about it. So uh, I definitely recommend this. It's, I highly recommend it, actually. Excellent. OK, well, I take it, Eric, you've not um, you've not seen it. No, no we don't have Hulu it. over here, do we? No. No. But, um, okay, was there anything else, Joseph? Yeah, just one more. I watched uh, the Santa slasher all through the house. Um, mm, okay. With the Santa with the garden shears. Mm. And uh, I, it was okay. Um, I think I liked some of the ghoulish and kind of jokey imagery more than I did the actual movie. For The problem is the directing's kind of bad. Like, they have these characters who basically see a threat and they just stand there and they don't do anything. And I don't know, I just, and it really bugs me, like, when someone's, like, say the killer's, like, 20 feet away, and they just stand there and scream. They don't try to run, they don't try to fight back. It just, you know, it just seems lazy. Um, but, you know, however, I did like a lot of the ghoulish imagery, and uh, some of the stuff they do in the film is pretty gruesome and kind of hilarious. But, uh, I don't know, kind of a mixed bag for me, Um uh, shot well it looks really you know really impressive but uh i don't know I, it just could have been a lot better than what it was okay okay i've not i've not seen that anyone else seen that new no nathan how about you are you still with us i am um, i haven't seen it i want to but i haven't seen it yet okay right well thank you joseph um nathan how about you um, Friday night, I watched uh, Pet Cemetery. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'd seen it, you know, a long time ago, and it, it's been a while since I've watched it again. Mainly, the biggest thing I remember about it was Zelda, because she's kind of burned into my memory. Um, but I mean, I really liked the film. My, I think my problem with it, which is not a bad thing, I mean, it's not a complaint about the movie, but it's that. It's such a downbeat film. I mean, you're just watching this family go through tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. I mean, it's just uh, it's it's kind of a very sad horror film. Um, it's but I think it's a very good one. It's just a very very sad one. Um, but I mean, I know all, I'm, I'm sure all you guys have watched it, right? I saw it at the cinema. Well, I remember seeing it at the cinema. Yeah, tw- yeah, 27 years ago, I did. I haven't seen it since. You don't remember yeah. anything about it. Nothing. I, I remember thinking it was me. <gasps> Eric, you gotta. Wait, you, you should watch it again I'm, because you've changed your mind about a lot of movies. I know. That, I know. I feel like I've helped you. I do remember in somebody. That way. Is it Fred Gwynn gets his ankles sliced, which is oh, quite an a owl painful, moment. Yeah. Painful moment. I'm one of those people who actually prefers the sequel because it's so goofy and it's it's it, actually kind it, of fun. Is. Where the is first one's kind of Edward dreary. Furlong, is it? Yeah, the first one's so dreary and downbeat, but the sequel is so goofy. And Clancy Brown as the uh, the the cop stepfather, he's just so good in the film. It's just so watchable. Hmm. I remember the. But I don't bit. really remember much about Pet Cemetery other than the little kid and the. Hmm. Uh, you can't go down that rod. That's a dangerous rod. <laughs> Fred Are you sure you're not thinking of South Park? Well, that's what they're making fun of. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember the dad being really hot. Oh, yeah, he is. I mean, sure. we can't Absolutely. deny that. Dale Midkiff, is that who that was? Yeah. yeah. But he's very stupid. Mm. I remember him not being hot. Doesn't matter too much, really, does it? One thing I do remember about that film, and I think Nathan mentioned that, was the scene with, a, was it Zelda, the old hag looking Yeah, thing? like the, the hag thing, yeah. Oh, yeah, dear. The wife sister. Come out again. Yeah, it was just creepy. Mm. She was the scariest part of the movie for me. I mean, yeah. she was just really freaky looking and you know i can't imagine being an eight-year-old taking care of this like you know crazy demented woman i think both she's like the stephen both. king version of uh peter bark from burial ground well, I think mm-hmm. both, oh burial both ground that's and... a great film now have all you oh. guys seen burial ground yes yes of course we <laughs> have. how could you not but he, <laughs> breast <course>. munching tastic <laughs> Oh, Eric. <laughs> mama, I need your breast, Mama. People are so mean to the mom in that movie. I'm like, I mean, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, she's she fucking let, weird, okay? What? No, she let her son, like, put his mouth on her boobie, which is probably not a good thing. Um, especially at his age. 32. But, yeah. And the fact that he's obviously she was, a zombie as well. But she was, like, she was overcome with grief at the time, so she probably wasn't thinking clearly. 
Nathan and I think that <laughs> Nathan and I think Peter Bark is like the human version of Hans Mole Man. He's like a, a weird little thing. He's yes. not human. <laughs> Justin won't get that reference. Hans Moldman is a character in The Simpsons. Okay, Justin. okay. I wish I'd, I, um, yeah, I should have caught up with The Simpsons, but it's been like 442 episodes, so I feel a little bit left out. Well, but. I mean, you only have to watch the first like 10 seasons, and after that, you can just forget it because the rest of the seasons are not that great. Oh, okay. You know, hit and miss. Hit and miss. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would agree with that. Thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> Obviously, given that you've had a few drinks, I don't want to interrupt you, uh, so I'm giving you. Um, oh you know, yeah, because that would be bad. It would That'd be, be a bad. bad day. I mean, thankfully, um, I'm not near a kind of a, a pool or a like fountain you can throw me, <laughs> toss me off into, but like in Dynasty, <laughs> tossing him off. But hey, I would like. <laughs> you are so rude. What? Um, no, that's, so I'm talking about Nathan Joseph. off. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on, Nathan. Joseph. Oh, um, and I watched American Horror Story. I'm very, very addicted to that show. Now, I haven't really liked the last few seasons that much. I mean, I didn't dislike them, but I thought they were just kind of meh. But this current season is really, really good. And the last half of the season is, I think, going to be kind of a found footage slasher type deal. And um, that's not a spoiler, so nobody that hasn't seen that episode yet, please don't get on Facebook and scream and yell and cuss me out over this, because I swear, it's not a spoiler. You know, it's not like I'm saying, oh, the maid of the house is the one knocking all these people off, okay? I didn't say that. I like the and maid of the first truth. season. So there. <laughs> is that Alexandra something? Oh, yeah. Paul? Is it Paul? No. It's not Alexandra Paul. Breckenridge. 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 That's right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Does she come back? Because I, I kind of no. I got, I got to like the half of second season and I gave up. So yeah, like I can understand like a lot of people, um, you know, like the first season the best. But to me, this current season, I think it's the best because, you know, I'm loving where they're going with it. You know, it's um, and it's already made me jump a few times. And Apparently, it's, it's like for a, a TV show to make me it's jump. It's like a isn't like the first half sort of like a, a faux documentary and then it turns yeah. into like found footage slasher or whatever. They kind of do. Yeah. They kind of do like a documentary uh, during the first half. And then the second half, I, I don't want to say it's a slasher cause we haven't seen a whole lot about it um, and, and where they're going with it. But the general idea that I'm getting, like the hints I'm getting from it is that it's going to be one of those where people get knocked off one by one um, hmm. until the end of the show. Now, do you? Uh, I know the second season. You didn't have to see the previous to understand it. Is this the same with this season? Yeah, it's a whole new season in and of itself. You don't have okay. to see any previous season because okay. the most they do is they might tie a season together, but the the ties are so tenuous that only people that have seen the previous season would get it. Anybody else, it just wouldn't mean anything to them. So it's not like you have to see them to know. Okay. Well, thank you, Nathan. I haven't seen. I've, I'm. I'm a bit like a lot of people I haven't seen anything past the first season so I know there's been like 442 seasons but yeah. um, I just think everybody should at least try to watch the newest one like okay because I mean to me it's it's got even a better feel I even like it more than season one I think it's even way better than season one to me so far okay so I feel like they've really found a stride this season but of course I'm a slasher fan yeah. so I mean of course you know if I see something leading to a slasher-esque you know, area, then I'm going to really like it. Has, has it's anyone's, my favorite. Has anyone watched the uh, Screen Queens uh, second season? Yes, I love Screen no. Queens. Is it's it such a new mm. one. Is it, I love is, it. Is it still got a slasher thing going on or not? Yeah, this season they're in a hospital and there's like a slasher killer. But if you don't like that goofy humor that was in the first season, then you shouldn't watch the second one. I like it just because I like stupid movies. So, of course, I like stupid TV shows, mm. you know. So I mean, if you if you watch the first season and thought it was terrible, then don't watch the second because it's more of the same. But if you like the first season, then I'd say give the second season a shot. Okay, well that sounds good. So um, anything else, Nathan? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I, I mean, it's been like you know about six months since we recorded last, but <laughs> I feel like if I had seen anything else, I would have wrote it down. And I'm looking at my notes; they're kind of jumbled, but. Um, a bit blurry. I don't see anything else on them. Yeah, a little a bit, bit. Bit blurry. Okay. Well, thank you, Nathan. How about you, Eric? You're welcome. You watching. Oh, thank you. Me? Yes, you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose staying with the TV theme, I have been watching uh, along with Ash vs Evil Dead. The other one I'm giving a whirl to is the Exorcist TV series, mm. 
which is now on episode five, I believe. Uh, and up until now, I have been like, oh, this is dragging on and on. It's a bit dull. It starts off in, in episode one with um, a woman going to a priest saying, I think my daughter is possessed on the basis that her daughter has just decided she wants to stay in a room a bit more and text her friends and do stuff like that and be a bit uh, of an emo or a goth, Justin. Huh. Um, and that's the only that's the only signs of possession she's, well, even if you can call it that, that she's showing. And I was Burn like, the oh, witch. for fuck's sake, this is... Sorry? Burn the witch. Yes. And so, like, for the first four episodes, I was not into it, but I said I'll persevere. I think there's going to be 13 episodes in it. Now, there's something happens in episode five that has me hooked now and, and intrigued to, you know, to stick with it. So I won't say what it is, but... Um, uh, so up until this point, I've been a bit bored by it, but now something has happened where I'm like, ooh, this could be good. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give that a whirl. Uh, otherwise... Uh, I watched Omen 4 The Awakening, which is a DVD I picked up for 50 cents um, a couple of weeks ago. It's a made-for-TV sequel, uh, and it has a Halloween connection, actually, because um, the original director on the, the film was Dominic, Dominique Othen and Girard, who was director of Halloween 5. Uh, but he was replaced midway through the shoot. I don't think he uh, got on with the producers uh, by somebody called Jorge Montese. Uh, now, the film itself, it's, it's I suppose it's kind of bland, but it's quite cheesy as well and a bit fun, to be honest. But it's a very TV-friendly remake of the original, just replacing um, a little girl as the Antichrist with a question mark beside that, because is she the Antichrist? You'll have to tune, you have to watch the film and find out, because they do mm. sort of do a little twist halfway through um but overall it was you know it's it's nothing spectacular or anything and it does really look like it was made for tv but it has that real dated early 90s look i think it was made in 1991 um that had gives it kind of a, a, a dated charm i suppose and it was 50 cent well spent i think i don't know if anyone else has seen omen for the awakening yes I, I believe book. actually oh, it, was... Well, it was made for TV in the States, but I think it got theatrical release possibly over here or in somewhere I in Europe. I think it did actually, yes. I think you're mm. right. I've, I've not seen it, but I think it, I remember I read the book. Was it The Abomination or something? It was. Well, I, The Awakening is named the book, is named the movie, uh, so. Maybe it's Omen 5 as The Abomination. It was Ooh. Omen 6 Toya. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You've really slagged her off this week, and I'm not impressed. Oh, come on, Eric. Even you must have thought that video was funny. That video was fantastic, and she's got great makeup, but she's got seagulls painted on her face and stuff. Are you not impressed with him insulting her or with the level of insults that he's giving? It's the level of insults. It's just a nonstop barrage of them. He, ne he neglected to mention that she was on top of the Pops the other night from an episode from 1982, which she was number 21. Oh, and who was she above in the charts? Oh, that's right. Susie and the Banshees, who are stuck at number 23. Yeah, Does no, Toya no. not have a band like Toya and the Toya is the name of the band or something? Toya is oh. the name of the band. It's Toya and the Argonauts. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be like she's got the Banshees, you know, because yeah. they're yeah. like Banshees in the background. But yeah. um, Toya, she like, she's just Toya. Like, it's like Madonna or yeah. like. But no, Toya, is, is, not Toya apparently is the name of her band as well. Okay. Oh, okay. So the whole the, band okay. are called it, Toya. It encompasses the whole band. Okay, it does. Okay. But we won't mention Toya oh. again, um, or Susie, no. I, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, right. But um, never again. So, um, Eric, I think you said else? that in the first episode, actually, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But um, <laughs> anyway, we don't want to drag things down because we've still got Buster yeah. Rhymes to get to. So, Yay. Eric, uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, I watched the latest film by Wu Chung Lee. Um, no, I didn't. Um, that was Buster Rhymes. That's a Halloween Resurrection joke. No. Yes. Yeah. Who's paying attention. Wu Chung Lee? What? It's not the name of the guy, the kung fu guy he's watching on telly in the movie. Oh, I didn't know Motel. that. Motel. Something like that. Anyway. Oh. Uh, anyway, I also watched a, a kind of forgettable big budget theatrical release from earlier this year. It was called The Darkness. Uh, it's directed by Greg McLean, who did um, Wolf Creek and Rogue. Uh, and it's a, it's another insidious style movie where this autistic boy is on vacation with his family in the sort of some kind of desert area. I think it's a Grand Canyon type area of the U.S. Uh, and he finds some rune stones in a cave in the desert, and it, it uh, unleashes some Native American type demony thing that follows him back to his house, and sort of supernatural events ensue. And it's all very generic, and it's all very you know, as I said, insidious, like it, it feels like a James Wan knockoff very much so. So it was all completely ho-hum. It has Kevin Bacon in it and it has Radha Mitchell as, as the parents. Uh, you know, it's, it's well made, well acted. 
I just was a bit bored by it. And at the same time, I watched Insidious, not the same time, obviously, but around the same time I was watch, I watched Insidious 2 again. Uh, I saw it in the cinema when it came out and thought, well, it was OK. But now rewatching it, I thought it was a bit drab as well. And uh, in fairness, the darkness was slightly better than it. Um, but I, I'm just kind of bored with those movies. Yeah, I couldn't finish Insidious 2. Mm -hmm. I haven't it seen just, it. You guys wouldn't recommend it. It's all right. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. I, I mean, it's okay, it, but... but it's just it's it's uh, it's quite run of the mill. I find. I mean, I'm not mad on the the two. I've seen the two Conjuring movies as well, and I wouldn't be pushed on them either. Which is a shame because the the concepts of them it's it makes me think. Oh, I love these, but then the execution. I'm like, oh, no. See, I like the first Insidious, but uh, I got about about three quarters of the way through Insidious two, and I just kind of gave up on it. Mm. Yeah, but I've got two words for you. Patrick Wilson. Oh, that's to all, all the two words I probably would need. He looks like a foot. He, no, looks, he, he, he does really look like a cute. foot. No, you got a very wrong. handsome He's foot. He's really cute. Um, did you know that his, that's not his real name? His real name is Blandy Blanderson. <gasps> you, know, you know he's Eric, a pedophile, Eric, how could you? Right? Yeah, and he sells drugs to children. He's oh, a pedophile. That was, not, that, was that proven in Hard Candy? I don't know if that was proven. No, well, I mean, it means you... It and means he, he really is a pedophile in real life. No, yeah. no, you've got oh, always no, that's a, slander. That's, that's slander. Terrible. Yeah, come on. We, yeah, that's allegedly. That that's hey, not even allegedly. Drunk, that's Patrick, not even. You're listening, he's so. not at all. So Joseph, anyway, um, Joseph is not no longer part of the hysteria. Continues. No, Patrick, you're gorgeous. I'm free. That's all I gotta say. I'm free. Free falling. Well, let's um. Shall I mean, we, I'd Eric? Have you, have you got anything else you want to? Pardon. To be honest. Eric. Sorry? Have you got anything else yeah. to talk about? Uh, no, that's it. Well, I can talk about Patrick Wilson a little bit because I watched um, Bone Tomahawk. No. Yeah, Bone Tomahawk. Has anyone seen that? The right. Western horror movie? Um, I tried to watch him, and it feels like a Western. I don't like Westerns. Well, I don't like Westerns either, but it turns into a horror movie in the second half, and it gets very, very gory and nasty. And there's a bit in it where they hang a naked man upside down but from oh. his feet, and they whack him up the... On the arse and his genitals with a tomahawk. <laughs> it's actually I'm not saying really that's a selling brutal. point. I'm just saying that's kind of like it goes into a horror movie <laughs> style. It's a really brutal scene. It's hard, kind of hard to watch. Well, you how did, you said you only watched a little bit of it, and that was towards the end. Me? Yeah. No, I just said I didn't like the. It was a western. I don't like westerns. No, but said you tried. To, well, he said you tried to watch it, which, you tried made, to which watch implied it. that you only watched a bit of it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to imply I only watched a little bit. It was kind of one of those things where I was looking at my phone and half paying attention to it, but I did pay attention to the gore scenes, of course. Yes. And the nudie men scenes hanging upside down in the tree. No, it wasn't like that. No, no. Well, unfortunately, because no. I mean Patrick Wilson, he kind of uh, br uh, he kind of hurt his leg, didn't he, or whatever. So he kind of went a little limp, which obviously isn't a good thing. But um, um, but the film itself, I thought it was really good. I thought it was um, it was uh, very gory, and you had um, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, oh, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah, and he has like a hot kind of um, whiskey kind of flask shoved in his stomach. So it was all very, oh, very gory oh, and nasty. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I huh? thought you were saying he was kind of hot, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if I agree with that, but not anymore. Maybe no. 30 years ago, yeah. but not now. But I like that. But actually, I've watched. Anyway, I'm going to move on because I've watched loads and loads of horror movies recently. Because uh, Stuart decided he, after watching Unfriended, he decided thought that all social media horror movies would be fantastic. Little did he know. So we added it to Love Film, which is our kind of like uh, video rental, DVD, Blu-ray rental thing. So we've had loads of these kind of social media horror movies coming through. And obviously, um, they're not all like Unfriended or The Den. So we saw, has anyone seen Smiley? Yes, oh. yeah. I did see I did see friend requests, though. Oh, God, oh, any good? yes, I've seen Smiley. It's terrible. It didn't make me smile. <laughs> Made me frown. Yes. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't great. It wasn't. Smiley wasn't great. And also, it, but what's friend request like? Have you seen it, Eric? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, it, it it's it's okay. It's it's like the ring. It's like a, a, a sort of a not as effective ring or grudge type movie. Mm. Um, it's basically a, a girl is haunted by a demonic person who sends her a friend request on Facebook that she accepts, and so she's cursed. Then, so isn't there another one called a uh, chain letter? I think that's a social media. Movie, oh my it? god. Oh, yeah, that movie really, sucked too. That's it's terrible. That's quite old, though, isn't it? Isn't that the one where people get pulled apart outside a garage? 
Yes. Yeah. But um, though I saw Smiley was was quite bad. It was quite. It was okay, but it was kind of really dumb, wasn't it? The ending, especially, was very dumb. Um, but there's also Antisocial. Have you seen Antisocial? Where... Yes, I saw that at the Horathon in, in in Dublin a few a few years ago. That's the one on New Year's Eve, isn't it? It's and the New Year's Eve, the, zom- the zombie yeah. one. Yeah, where they kind of like the uh, Facebook or the type of Facebook spreading this kind of zombie virus around the world. Mm. So now, wait a minute, are you saying that Stuart liked Unfriended? He loved Unfriended. <gasps> I loved, I loved Unfriended, Unfriended too. I liked too. Unfriended as well. I thought it was great. It was, it was really fun. That's three against one. So yeah, three. after hearing everyone saying how <laughs> awful you're not, it was. You're not confusing it with Friend Request, are you? Unfriended is the one that's all set on a no, desktop. Joseph yeah, yeah. hated Unfriended. I remember yes. this. I remember the, him hating it because he and I, I disagreed. Thought, I thought it was really well done and I thought I would be bored of a film that's just set on someone's desktop. The characters are so snotty. I just couldn't yeah. stand it. Well, that's why they got what they deserved. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, because I, I watched those, and then the other things tonight, I watched Southbound. Have you seen Southbound? No, I want to, but I Which haven't. That's an anthology. An- and anthology. I've been meaning to catch that. I haven't seen it yet. It's got eighty. Sorry, Justin, tinged... before you say anything else, what did you think of um, of Antisocial? Uh, I, I kind of I liked what it was trying to do, but I thought it was its budget limited it a little bit. Mm, yeah, um, I would agree. And there was the, there was apparently it's a sequel as well. Oh, was there? Yeah, uh, didn't know that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was, I think it was it was it was okay, but it wasn't it wasn't unfriended, basically. No, but um, yeah, but yeah, and I watched Southbound yeah. tonight, and that was kind of like a eighties anthology, except it was more like if you imagine eighties like David um, David uh, Lynch anthology, so nothing made any sense. A bit like you know the is it holidays the the one where everything's kind of like nothing kind of is concrete or set in stone. You, it's everything's left up in the air, and this one's very much like that. Um, it's it's basically you've got the idea is you've got like five disparate stories of, of different groups of people, individuals driving down a highway, and they end up in this kind of weird never world of of kind of weirdness, like David Lynch kind of weirdness going on. Um, and I I quite liked it. Stuart hated it. He said it was fucking shit. So, um, <laughs> that's so, a damning. Yeah, yeah. I, I like brutal. his in depth analysis there. But exactly. <laughs> and uh, well, I can always tell because the iPad comes up and then it didn't come off it. And I thought, well, I thought it was okay. I, I kind of quite appreciated some of the kind of the weird kind of out there. There's some really good special effects and kind of oddness, but. It was also you have to ask yourself whether or not that kind of the sometimes where that whole thing of David Lynch thing is it is it genius or is it laziness because you don't explain anything, and so mm. there, there, there was that going on there, um, and then uh, before that waiting to stay up to drink and do the podcast to watch the Green Inferno for the first time, the Eli oh, Roth I've seen that, yeah. um, which I hadn't seen before, which I quite enjoyed. It was quite, but I do I do agree that it was kind of like a whole weird kind of comedy thing going through. It's like the pratfall weird things with like you know a little girl of uh, people being pulled apart and a little girl running away with a foot um and just mm. weird stuff and somebody like that. getting all... diarrhea yeah someone getting diarrhea yeah. it's just kind of it was all kind of a little bit odd um and a tarantula on a cock i mean you know i mean uh, it's yeah oddness but it was uh yeah it was uh, it was okay but uh but um it was all preparation obviously like preparation h for um <laughs> for tonight <laughs> We've, yeah, uh, I've one thing to ask you though, Justin, and yeah. I've been meaning to ask you this for ages because I know it's back in. I think it's back in August. You watched this, uh, Jaws 3D on Blu-ray. You watched. Oh, oh yes. Well, and I've had a migraine. How is the 3D? I've had a migraine since. If I'm honest, really, is it, um, is it bad? No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I mean, I mean, um, it's it's okay, but it's not. It, it is quite blurry and not fantastic, but. It's. I think it's partly down to the special effects because you know, like the, um, you know, back in 1914 or something, they could make a man on the moon wink, and I said wink, um, and uh, mm-hmm. and this they had like the teeth, like uh, like Jaws's dentures coming out of the screen in like really yeah. bad, like someone had like had like a a stick, a broom pushing them out, and it was it was quite obvious. I mean, I saw it back in the cinema in 1982, whenever it was, in 3D. And I remember thinking back then it was a bit rubbish. 3D. It was the 3D is not nearly as good as Friday the 13th Part Three in 3D, which I have seen properly projected on screen in proper kind of uh, silver, whatever um, sort of um, what they call it, not the black, uh, the blue and red, but the uh, 
the oh, uh, polarized lenses, polarized yeah. yeah 3D and the 3D and 3D 13 part 3 is is fantastic um, it's such a shame and I can't understand why no one releases it in well Paramount essentially why they won't release so they, it in 3D do, but do the 3D effects I mean I know they look hokey in that but but you're saying well, they, they look quite good in the, the things whole... don't come out of the screen do they well no it's it's quite good when there's um all the you know people water skiing and stuff like that it's quite good yeah and it's quite mm. effective but yeah it's 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 all very soft it looks very it's not very clear but uh, yeah, it's worth worth seeing. But it's not a great film. I've forgotten how rubbish it was. Really. Well, I I bought the Blu-ray as well. Um, even though I don't have a three D setup, but there is a two D print of the of the film on the Blu-ray, and it, it it's it's the grainiest looking Blu-ray I've ever seen in my life. It just it, it is yeah. um, as you said, and the you know it's very soft. I suppose would be the word. But I I I would disagree. I think it's a great movie. <laughs> but hey, I'm I'm slowly turning into Nathan. What can I say? <laughs> no, well, that's not a bad thing. No, it's not. No. Well, the, the last thing I'll talk about very, very quickly was the, the Scream TV, the Halloween special, which was uh, I thought was a lot of fun. It was like a, um, if you've been watching a Scream TV series uh, without giving any spoilers, but it was uh, it was kind of like, uh, six months or nine months after the end of Scream uh, series two, and they go off to uh, an island like I still know what you did last summer. Um, and uh, there's a, a history of a kind of slasher murder from the 1900s or so about a girl who supposedly killed her parents and people with shears. And so there's a murder house and they turn up and people start dying. And it was good fun. It was great. It was very, um, very, I know what you did last summer. It was a very 90s kind of slasher movie thing. But it was a lot of fun. And of course, Scream, the TV series, has been renewed for another six episodes, I think, next year. I, I enjoyed it, so um, yeah, it's it's worth a watch. Did anyone else watch it? Is that, um, a, is that a I note? mean, I've really tried. Uh, I tried to watch the first season, but I'm having such a hard time getting through it. I'm I'm getting so bored, and I heard that the second season is worth it, but it's become such a chore trying to get through that first season. Oh, Nathan, just do it. Have a drink and do it. I am trying. Do it for I'm Tennessee. Really, really trying. Yeah. Okay, well, I know you're trying, Nathan, but <laughs> let's let's move on to where we're we moving on to the main feature. The, uh, oh, main yeah. feature? Well, are we going to recharge our glasses? I already oh, just, I've already, I, I, I've already I just, done that. I've already done that. I muted my microphone and just recharged my glasses. Oh, I was going to mute it, but I was afraid y'all might try to talk to me or something. No, well, I, things I need to go down to the bar, and uh, not that I have a bar. Ah, for but, fuck's um, sake! Could you not bring the bottle up to? The- the computer room. Well, no, that'd be tempting you fate, wouldn't it? Word. I said, yeah, I said the F word because I've had a drink. <laughs> God, you can't. I'm take slowly the du- turning into Inga again. Yeah, can't take the, the Dublin out of the out of the boy. But um, okay, yeah. well, anyway, here I go with my eloquent speech. The reality programmers at Dangertainment have selected Rudy, Sean Patrick Thomas, Dracula 2000, Bill, Thomas Ian Nichols, American Pie and a group of thrill-seeking teenagers to spend one fun-filled night in the childhood home of serial killer Michael Myers. But the planned live broadcast turns deadly when Michael himself decides to crash the party. Bianca Kajlich, or something, bring it on. (laughs) Katy Sackhoff, Riddick, Battlestar Galactica, Buster Rhymes, Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model, Uh, also star with a special guest appearance by Jamie Lee Curtis. Colour, 2002, 94 minutes, rated R, DTS HD, Master Audio, 5.1. That's the back of the sleeve of Halloween Resurrection. Um, now, there's going to be different opinions on this, I can guarantee you that. Because uh, it's a real train wreck of a movie. Uh, I'm the first to admit that. It gets off to the shakiest of starts, uh, undoing the dramatic climax of H2O, where Laurie decapitated Michael Myers, and undoing it in the most ludicrous manner, you can imagine, um, as just as Joe, uh, no, who am I trying to say? Nathan. So eloquently put it last on the last episode we did on Halloween, uh, he said he would have preferred if Michael had just picked up his severed head and sewed it back on rather than the explanation given in this movie where Laurie had accidentally decapitated a paramedic that Michael Myers had sort of set up and superglued the mask to his head, apparently. Um, so, and it's actually quite depressing, the opening scenes, to see Laurie uh, Strode looking like Neil from The young, <laughs> young Ones and sort of stuck in a mental asylum. You know, after the girl power attitude she's shown through the Halloween series up to this point, to, you know, to see her as this sort of pathetic um, 
uh, mental patient, I suppose. Uh, it's it's kind of sad, and killing her off is is one thing, but killing her off so easily is is it's just mean spirited, I think. But you know, hey ho, uh, it's it's from the once the prologue is over, I'm sort of with the movie from there on in, which a lot of people aren't. Um, we move to the main meat of the film, which follows a bunch of wannabe reality superstars who are doing this Big Brother style stint in the old Myers house, which is run by Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks, two people that uh, you normally would not see in horror movies. Um, so from this point on, the film, uh, you know, just gets even more, just gets more and more ridiculously stupid as it goes along. Uh, insult, insults the intelligence of the viewer in the same way that Halloween 5 does, and it has Buster Rhymes swearing a lot and doing kung fu moves and, um, you know, kung fu kicking Michael Myers, uh, which is just cringy, to be honest. But yet it manages to entertain, or it entertains me at least. And of course it has uh, Tyra Banks, who unfortunately is not on her way to becoming America's Next Top Actress, um, sorry, Tyra. Uh, you know, so from the outset, I mean, going into the film, I knew it was going to be no masterpiece. Uh, but I think if you can accept the silly and very dated looking concept, you know, anything that utilizes technology in this way, um, uh, surveillance cameras and Internet and texting, it's, it's just going to date quite quickly. And this one has, uh, you know, in the 14 years since it was made. Uh, but I think if you take into consideration all the Halloween sequels, um, I would rate this as being on a par with Halloween 5, which is a sequel that I actually quite like. Uh, so it's one of the best of the post-Carpenter sequels, which were uh, post-Carpenter Halloween films, which was 1, 2, and 3. So I would consider this as on a par with 5. So that's an endorsement of sorts from me. Um, the characters are fairly one-dimensional. They're sort of pseudo-intellectual, slightly poncy college kids. There's a chef guy who's convinced Michael Myers' diet was to blame for his uh, evil. There's the airhead girl who just wants to be famous. Um, I wouldn't go as far to say as they're unlikable, but they're fairly inconsequential characters. Uh, and it's quite damning to say that Buster Rhymes has the most personality of the lot. Uh, perhaps a little bit too much personality, um, as he tends to overdo things. But he is hilarious um, at times. I, I think most of it unintentionally, especially as he mumbles his way through the scenes where he's wearing the Michael Myers mask. And I know we've spoken about that before. I think, Justin, you were saying that... Um, they had to clean up his dialogue or, you know, make his dialogue more legible for the DVD release because in theatres, apparently, it was too muffled. Well, and, of course, he has his very own um, I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane moment when he does his classic line, trick or treat, motherfucker. Um, uh, the final girl, she's fairly likable, I suppose, Sarah. Um, she's a bit bland, to be honest. Uh, I like the idea she's relying on her cyber buddy, Deckard, to help guide her to safety because he's watching on the live stream in a remote location and he can see where Michael Myers is and where she is and he can give her directions and that. I think that bit's done quite well. Um, uh, the mask this time around is slightly better than it was in H2O. They still haven't quite got, you know... The, the the look right in one and two it was perfect and all the sequels have fucked it up to some degree this maybe not as much as five six and seven did but it's at least it's consistent i suppose where in h2o you had sort of three or four different looks to the mask all the way through the film uh, here he looks kind of like sid vicious i thought um maybe i'm just being i'm probably being a bit over generous uh, when i saw this back in the day um i was able to accept its multitude of flaws and i just enjoyed it for what it is because i knew going in kind of it, the reviews it had gotten and um, it, this actually did play theatrically over here we, uh, maybe only for a week or two in, in tiny little screen in the multiplex but to get a theatrical release which is bizarre because looking back at it now it looks very straight to DVD um, so yeah my generous assessment is it's on a par with Halloween 5 which is a, a sequel that I have a lot of time for I would say um, but I'd be it's not a film we've discussed too often on the podcast so I'm unsure of some of the reactions to this, but I got the vibe that nobody else likes it. So Justin, oh. Halloween Resurrection. Oh, Eric. Um, well, what? I saw this at the cinema um, and I remember going to watch it because I, I've spoken about it before, going to see H2O and when the music kicked in, everyone started clapping. It was a bit like we've going to see one of the Alien sequels and the, the, um, the, the kind of... Um, uh, 20th Century Fox, I think, kind of logo came up and everyone started clapping. So it was like that. Whereas with this one, it felt like it was really done by that point. It was like overcooked. Um, and uh, the, the whole bus Big Mac overdone. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, but the Buster Rhymes thing was, I remember at the time, it was just like the whole, well, the whole cinema, I'm talking about 10 people, 
um, were laughing at Buster Rhymes. Uh, so I think it was kind of actually Stuart is kind of a, quite an astute critic because he kind of he sometimes will turn over say to me things and I'm thinking, you know, he he cuts the nub of these things and he's basically said um, that this film hasn't got enough vintage. It's not old enough. It's still it's almost uh, too modern to be. It's still a bit naff and it's not old enough to be really cheesy. So I think give it another five, ten years, and this film will be rediscovered as a, like a, a really cheesy, kind of crappy, funny, entertaining movie. Um, I was actually surprised re-watching it. I thought, actually, there's bits in it that I thought were really good. Um, uh, they were a good germ of an idea here. It was kind of, you know, ba basically what they did was they kind of, they kind of shoehorned... Um, uh, My Little Lie. I'm not sure if that came out before this or around the same time. It was also the that... same year. I'm not sure what time of the year no. though. Yeah. But the Blair Witch Project, you know, is basically they kind of they kind of decided to kind of the whole not the Blair Witch Project obviously wasn't social media, but the found footage type thing, mm. um, and they kind of shoehorned it all onto that. Um, I kind of uh, given at the time when I was watching it and I was the, the the first 15 minutes of it I thought were were really quite well done um I thought Jamie Lee Curtis you know the whole thing of her pretend you know waiting for Michael Myers her brother to come back um it turns out he was living in the basement of his gothic basement like the underground of of like the uh, Phantom of the Opera in Paris who knew that they, they hadn't, you know, the Myers house would have like this kind of gothic kind of uh, underground. Then he was living in there and he came back to get uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and she was, you know, she's waiting for him. And it was quite, uh, I thought it was all quite well done. I liked the fact that there was the the um, the, the serial killer obsessed patient who was dressed in the, the clown mask, which was the original mask from who before um, the, uh, the mask they settled on for Halloween. Uh, so I thought, well, that was quite well done, and he used to, he, he remember because the way he talked about John Wayne Gacy's crimes, and then he saw Michael Myers, he talked about talked through his crimes, all this kind of thing. I thought, you know, this is all, uh, uh, you know, watching Gain, I was thinking I must have when I saw it the first time, I was thinking this is really going places, this is going to get really good, um, but I it can't get past the fact that it's just monumentally fucking stupid. The whole movie is is ridiculous. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but this idea that they set up this... They never even mention that the uh, the cameraman who gets killed in a nod to Peeping Tom, the, the Michael Powell movie, where he kind of gets stabbed in the throat with the, um, with the spear at the beginning. Nobody even mentions he's not there anymore. It's kind of, you know, it's so careless, the, the film. And also this idea of uh, a, a kind of a haunted mansion that they set up like a booby trap with all these things that no one ever actually sees the Michael Myers walking around this house, you know, and they've got all these people with um, with headsets, no one sees it. Um, and then you've got this kind of bizarre kind of underground warren of places underneath this kind of like 1940s sort of American Americana suburban house with this idea that Michael Myers was chained to the basement, although I, obviously I know that they're <laughs> pretending um, they were making all of that up. But... It, yeah. So, but having said that, um, there were lots of bits in that I actually quite enjoyed. I liked the the scene with the the woman getting her head chopped off and rolling down the stairs. That was really well done. Um, and actually, the the idea of the people watching in a party, it going on real time, was quite well done. You know, those bits of it I thought were were good. Um, it's just that it didn't feel. It felt like, especially the mask. The mask was uh, still. It was just too white. It was too new. It's kind of it wasn't the Michael Myers mask, and it's just this idea that every time they made a new Halloween movie, the special effects person decided they had to stamp their mark on the Michael Myers mask, and you're thinking, why? You know, it is. But um, so overall, actually, I enjoyed it more this time than I thought I would. Um, Buster Rhymes is still like a bust, really. You know, it's. But I think give it another five, ten years, and it'll be it'll be comedy gold. But it still rankles a little bit. So there's my drunken tuppence. Well, yeah, it's interesting you say that it do doesn't have the uh, vintage and the echo is back big time. <laughs> well, we, 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 we're suffering through the echo, but there may be that's kind of your ears being drunk. <laughs> Maybe it is. Um, I'll try and persevere through it. Um, uh, I'll take my headphones out uh, and just say that uh, 
you were saying about it doesn't have enough vintage, and I think that's reflected in the Scream Factory Blu-ray, which uh, is not catered for at all well with the special features because it just ha- it just ports over all the special features from the DVD from 2002 um, and doesn't have any retrospectives on it or anything because I was I was hoping there might be some uh, cast and crew involvement looking back on the film and talking about its production problems, which we would probably get into later. But uh, no, I mean they've gone to town with parts one to five. Or sorry, parts one to seven, uh, and then part eight is just sort of you know just chucked onto Blu-ray, you know, uh, I'll tell, I'll tell reflecting you one little, the f- one little hmm? thing that made me I thought was quite funny. Sorry to interrupt, but it was kind of like, do you remember when they went in and they smelt the basil or the the dried herbs in the kitchen yeah. and was going, wow, that smells like really fresh. It's this idea that Michael Myers has been living in this house and he's bought fresh herbs for his kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think what happens is Buster Rhymes has, has stocked the house to make okay. it look like somebody All did. right, well, yeah. fair enough, fair enough, yeah. But the, I, I just find it interesting the fact that they all go into this house thinking that, oh, we're going to find out what makes... My, like, first of all, the concept, uh, like, the idea behind Dangertainment is go into the house and see if you can find out what made Michael Myers evil. I mean, that's not a hook as such. Um, it wouldn't get me watching. Um But, yeah, I mean, the kids involved are monumentally stupid if they think that it hasn't all been set up. Uh, mm. If they think that this whole thing is real, I mean, how ridiculous! But it's um, supposed to be the idea that, that that there was really like a a dungeon and like tunnels under the Michael Myers house. Is that the that's because uh, Buster Rhymes wouldn't have made that, would that, would he? I don't think. No. 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 But I do like. I mean, you were saying about bits of it being monumentally stupid. One stupid bit I find actually one effective scene that turns really stupid is where we see Michael Myers prowling around the house and then another Michael Myers appears behind him. I thought that was quite well done until, you know, one of them starts speaking and one of them is Buster Rhymes. Um, and he's there shouting, saying, go away, you're going to ruin the illusion. But he's shouting so loud that, um, and it's such a small house that surely yeah. all the other con- you know, the, all the contestants as such are going to hear him. Um, well, the, the thing that really got me was the fact is that this is like a massive thing going on and they had all the press outside and there was no press outside during the murders, was there? No. None of the neighbours no. saw anything. So, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, happy fucking Halloween, Michael. Yeah, motherfucker. Um, Nathan? Nathan, I think I better get to you before you pass out, so. Um, yeah, this movie is one of the biggest piles of shit I've ever seen in my life. What? <gasps> oh, I my hate, goodness. Coming from I you. I hate this movie so much. I hate it, like... It's like flames on the side of my face. Like, that's how much I hate wow, this thing. Wow, that's like poetry. My I goodness. hate it. God, I hate it so bad. Oh, this is an alternative reality. It, it is torture. Alternative reality. It's like I Stranger Things. You do not take an iconic character like Laurie Strode and treat her like she is some secondary character to be bumped off at the beginning of this film. That is the biggest sin I've ever heard of in a horror movie in my life. I am is so it, uh, I'm so pissed off right now just thinking about it. Is it I'm so a angry. Dream sequence? Is she Possibly dead? Though? A dream sequence? Yeah. No, no, she's alive. I mean, uh, it's okay. She's alive, and I'm gonna tell you why she's alive. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I watched Wrong Turn, and in that movie, the kids climb up this like big tower in the forest, and they jump out of that tower into these trees, and they survive with minor injuries. So obviously, Lori could easily survive that fall, which was not even as high as the one in Wrong Turn. Yeah, but what, so about the sta- okay. what about the stab to the stomach? Yeah, but I mean, she's been stabbed before. That's like nothing to her. It's like, oh, you stabbed it's me again, Lord. big deal. You know, you've already stabbed me a few times already, but I'm fine. So, yeah, I mean, she's used to that. Mm. So, you know, she's alive. You know, there's no way. Jamie Lee Curtis and Halloween will never die to me. I don't care what they do. I mean, if they can say that Michael Myers switched his body and got decapitated, then I can say Jamie Lee survived, and it's not that unrealistic. Not in the realm of this film. What, well, what no. would happen if she'd landed on a screwdriver? Uh, well, I mean, that's nothing. I mean, if she can take a butcher knife, she can take a screwdriver. I was just Ooh. thinking about Alice from Friday 13th, part two. Well, I mean, she's oh, alive, yes. too. Yeah. They're probably roommates right now. I they would probably imagine, are. They both went through something mm. very similar. They, you know, survived a horrible traumatic experience, and then everybody in the world thinks that they're dead in one of the sequels, and they're not. So, I mean, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. You know, I'm trying to calm myself down. I'm so <laughs> you need to angry down. at the way that they treated her in this movie. I thought it was terrible. I felt, if I was Jamie Lee Curtis, I'd have been like, I'm not dying in the movie, or I won't come back. 
But I think the Jamie Lee Curtis wanted to die in this movie, though, didn't she? She wanted to well, be tossed, tossed in that bush. Yeah, that's part of the background I have. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, anyway. Well, I, I love you, Jamie Lee, but i got to disagree with you with that. Laurie cannot die. Um, you know, if, the only way I would accept Laurie dying is she and Michael went, like, out together. You know, like they both died at the same time or something. But I can't handle Michael finally killing her and then moving on to a bunch of vapid teenagers that are just, you know, stupid. And, you know, they all got what they deserved. I don't care. Except for Buster Rhymes. For some reason, he don't get what he deserves. You know, it's okay. He can kung fu fight Michael. And that's just, you know, Michael apparently cannot handle him that well. You know, Michael Byers can't just easily murder Buster Rhymes, you know, just like the snap of your finger. He should have been able to. But not in this, like, movie, because this movie is garbage, and that's probably why, you know, because they just, like, fell asleep and, you know, like, probably sleepwalking when they wrote this thing. Um, wow, I think you hate this worse than Silent Rage. Oh, my God. I just, are I you don't... telling me, Nathan Johnson, are you telling me that you think Halloween Resurrection is a worse film than Terror at Ten Killer? Oh! <gasps> To me, yes, it's way worse. I would watch oh, Terror Ten Killer ten times before I'd rewatch this once. Now, I will tell you this: I might have liked it better if I could skip the beginning with Jamie Lee and just watch it from after well, that's that. That's the best bit. But I will never ever forgive it for the beginning. You guys, you guys all know how much I hate when they try to kill off a character that survived previously in a sequel. Yeah. I think that's sloppy. I think it's lazy. I think it's stupid. And they do it all the time in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Oh, it drives yeah. me crazy in that one too, and that's another thing. I mean, I'm not believing that either. It was all a dream. Everybody's dreaming. Everybody's I would dreaming have to agree with Nathan here, God. Justin. I, I, it's the first ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes. I don't like. It's the rest of the film. I do, I do kind of half like. Well, see, I and I kind of wish that maybe, maybe if I could go back and watch it, you know, without. Because the problem is that opening scene sours me so bad on the rest of this film, and I might be being too hard on it by talking about how much I hate it because. You know, if I could just get the opening out of my mind and just try to enjoy the rest of it, I might be able to. But, I mean, Buster Rhymes, I can't handle him in this movie either. I really can't. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Like, oh, like, why couldn't we have just had just the teens only getting stalked and killed? Um, I might could have handled that. Um, I mean, I I'm sorry. There's not a whole lot of good I can even say. It's, you know, I, I like the Myers house. That was okay. I guess, you know, that they went back there and tried to recreate the house, whoever the set designer was. I mean, good on you, I guess. Um, maybe your talents would be better suited to a movie that's actually worth something. Um, this one I don't think was, you know. Um, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, in the, in the open, I mean, the idea that Michael has switched with a paramedic, it just kills H2O to me, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't think H2O was fantastic, but I liked it well enough, and I thought it was a good way to end, you know, like, the the Halloween series. You know, like, you could have had, you know, her decapitating them and end it, and then if you wanted to do a reboot, you could do the remakes, which, that's a whole other story, I won't get into that, but it drives me crazy that... They try to give this ridiculous story after the ending to H2O, which I thought was actually kind of like, you know, an emotional moment. And now it's like, oh, that wasn't an emotional moment. That was just some paramedic that was reaching out to her. But I'm he like, has, oh, great. But thanks. he has family. I, I know. But, I mean, it wasn't emotional to Lori because Lori thought, you know, it was her brother. And he was reaching out to her. And she decided, okay, well, i got to kill you. And unfortunately, in this movie, it's like, oh, no, it was just some secondary character. You know, there there was no emotional moment, Laurie. Oh, and, you know, just so you know, Michael's kind of come back and, you know, like come after you in the opening scene. You know, no big whoop, um, you know, and all, all, all that jazz. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just I, I can't forgive this movie for the first, what, 10 minutes. I just I can't forgive that. That is unforgivable nonsense to me. Um, I will never watch this film again. Um, I mean, I'll just go back and watch a good movie, which is the first Halloween, and a fun, cheesy movie, which is the second Halloween, and the fifth. The fifth I is really good, too. I don't think Halloween 2 is cheesy as such. I think well, it's a great I mean, movie. Not, not, not cheesy like part five is, but no, I just mean if you compare it to part one, like I always thought part one is a better film. Mm. But part two is a more rewatchable film to me as far as, mm. like, you know, body I count. Think, and mm. 
Yes. I think I would agree on that. Uh, one other thing I know that is silly about the the explanation for um, Laurie Strode accidentally decapitating a paramedic is that Michael Myers has to sort of switch places with the paramedic, and yet he was burned horribly at the end of Halloween 2. So well, if he's walking around <laughs> at the crime scene with his burned face, having you know <laughs> given the mask to the paramedic, surely people would notice, No. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, do yeah. you ever wonder how Michael Myers can even see? I mean, he's got yeah, his eyes Rory, shot out in part yeah, two. Yeah, showed. Roy Strode managed to shoot both his eyes out with her first ever attempt at using a revolver. We assume. And the, um, the killer, was, yeah. um, sorry, the final girl the throws vocals. oregano in his eyes, doesn't she, or something? Hmm? Doesn't she sorry? throw oregano, oregano in her, his eyes? Doesn't she? Who? Uh, in in this film, she throws something. Oh, in, in this his film, eyes. yeah, somebody does throw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like herbs in his eyes, and I was thinking at the time that wasn't why. If he has well, no it's eyes, the, it's the best. It's the best um, use of, uh, best self defense method since um, Alice threw some string at uh, Mrs. Voorhees in the original Friday the Thirteenth. I love it. I love when she throws like a little, like you know, like spool of yarn at her. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like Mrs. Voorhees. Okay, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, I know you're a huge fan of Halloween Resurrection. Actually, uh, lyrical. before we get into that, can you pause this? I re- I've got like 48 ounces of Pilsner running through my bladder, and I really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, let's... oh you have to do a new break. I get a new a number one. Well, um, Eric might be shocked to hear that I'm not as vitriolic towards this film as, as Nathan surprisingly was. I don't That's think it's strong. a good... Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think it's a good movie at all. I actually think it's a load of garbage, like like Nathan does. But I consider it to be the Friday the Thirteenth Part Five, a new beginning of the Halloween series. And Yay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Um, well, for one, I think the opening scene with Laurie Strode is, uh, you know, like Nathan. I think it's very insulting, but it's but it's also hilarious in how didactic it is with the uh, nurses. Like, oh. Uh, they're basically just telling the audience what happened, uh, you know, just over explaining everything. I, I, I get a kick out of that. Mm. Um, as annoying as Busta Rhymes is in this film, um, let's face it, he is very annoying, but he's nowhere near as bad as any character in either of the Rob Zombie films. So kudos to Agreed. Busta for, for that, at least. Um, actually, I mean, he's not. He's annoying, okay, but he's not unlikable. I, it's kind of hard to explain. Like he's not a he's not an asshole. He's just kind of you know over the top annoying. You know he's not unlikable. He's just he's just kind of bland and kind of silly, I guess you'd call it. And I'm um, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, Joseph, but I just wanted to say I agree with you. I don't think he's like an obnoxious character. Um, you know, so I he mean, just doesn't fit. Cool. He just doesn't yeah. fit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But anyway, um, I like the setup to this movie. I think it's a neat idea. It's not really executed all that well, but I, I like the idea of them kind of, I mean, as bad as I hate that they, quote unquote, to Nathan, killed Laurie Strode. Um, in a dream I, sequence. In a dream sequence, Nathan. Yeah, yes. okay. Green, yeah. green. She's not green. dead. It was a dream, anyway. Um, as bad as I hate that, I, I kind of like the idea that they veered off to this kind of psychology student who basically kind of confronts her inner fears in this, you know, house of ghoulish horrors with cameras pointing at her, you know, around every corner, kind of the big brother is watching you and Michael Myers is watching you. I, I kind of got a kick out of that. Um, you know, like Eric said, the characters aren't, I wouldn't say unlikable or likable, kind of inconsequential, but they're not obnoxious. So I appreciated that. You know, they're basically fodder. That's all they are. They're here to get picked off by Michael Myers. And I think, um, uh, Brad Laurie, who plays Michael Myers in this film, I think he does. You know, uh, one of the he's one of the better shapes in the in the series, in my opinion. Um, obviously, not a candle to the first two, but uh, you know, he's he's bro- you know he's brooding and shadowy in the background. I think he's he pulls that off really well. Um, the one thing, yeah. I, the one the one scene, ha ha ha. The one scene uh-huh. I did, I, I get I get a kick out of is not because it's how bad and cringe inducing it is with a. Buster Rhymes, you know, talking to that mask like, get your ass in the kitchen, motherfucker. You're not supposed to be in here. Uh, but um, <laughs> now, the, the, what I get a kick out of is like just just thinking that that Michael Myers, rather than kill this guy who's just so annoying, he probably just sits there and rolls his eyes like, what am I doing here? Why why am I not killing this guy? It's just so silly. Um, 
I don't know. It, it's a terrible, terrible movie. Probably the nadir of the original Halloween, you know, uh, series. But at the same time, it's it's kind of enjoyable because it's just so bad. You know, even something like Halloween 6, which was so convoluted and just tried to shoehorn so much into the plot, um, you know... <sighs> even it really can't hold a candle to this, how silly it is. And, uh, you know, for that, uh, I'm going to give it a marginal recommendation. I mean, I can't, I can't recommend it as a good Halloween film. I mean, it's, it's, it's a terrible, terrible Halloween film, but as a dumb, I'm talking extremely dumb, you know, slasher film, it, it you know, it kind of kicked, hits the right marks. It's one of those, I still know what you did last summer type films where, uh, you just turn off your brain, forget that this is a Halloween film, and just kind of laugh at it. So, uh, you know, thumbs up for me. Marginal, but thumbs up. Yeah, I would agree when you say that it's the nadir of the sort of original run of Halloween movies, which is never really, as you know from the history continues, is not really uh, uh, condemning a movie as such. Um, because Halloween 4 for me is still the worst of the original uh, <gasps> run of movies. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, it is. Um it's it's well made, uh, I can see, uh, but for I'm me it's just, it's it's deathly boring. It's deathly boring, and this film, as, stu- <laughs> as stupid as it is, um, entertains. It's not boring. Great. It's never boring. No, it's not boring. It's not one it I would air- watch regularly, but um, <laughs> um, it's certainly it entertains, and I mean sometimes it's unintentionally uh, funny. I mean, anytime Buster Rhymes is on screen, he's both simultaneously annoying and entertaining. I, I mean, I don't know whether to enjoy his performance I, or hate it. It's weird. I, I can't hate him. I mean, he's so annoying and he's so shoehorned into that kind of hip hop mm. culture, kind of, you know, appealing to that market. And he just sticks out like a sore thumb. But at the same time, I can't hate him because he's not unlikable. Mm. Can I make a confession? Yes. Um, and this is, you know, kind of shoehorning off something Joseph said You're a gay giving his thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is no confession. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Joseph had, had said, you know, something along the lines of, you know, like he, he, he didn't hate it just because it was just so bad. It was good, basically. Like it was just so stupid. It was good. Well, I decided to rewatch Texas Chainsaw 3D in a different mindset. And I really enjoyed it the second time around because of how mm. stupid, unbelievably <laughs> stupid it is. I enjoyed it the first time because of how I stupid it was. I didn't the first time only because I think I was expecting more out of it because the opening scene, they did such a good job. And I don't want to, you know, take you know, m- go off on a tangent away from Halloween, but I just wanted to say that would be so unlike me. us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just wanted to say it just reminded me that I did rewatch it and I loved it so much more the second time around. Could that happen with Halloween? Probably, or Halloween Resurrection? Probably not because of the Laurie Strode thing. But at least Texas Chainsaw 3D didn't, you know, gather up you know, Sally or something and kill her off in the opening sequence <laughs> like she was nothing. What? Um, you know. One thing you were mentioning, Eric, is how you know you didn't really care for Halloween Four, and I don't really care for Halloween Four either. I think Five, you know, its entertainment value is superior. But I, you know, I saw I saw one of those. Um, I, I guess it was a meme online where someone had a picture of uh, the title card of Halloween Three. It says Halloween Three, an original production, and then below it was the Halloween Four. Michael Myers is back. Are you happy now? I saw that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Do we all like Halloween Three? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, I love yeah. it. I think it's. Cause cause I, I think it's. I think it is brilliant. To be it's honest, underrated. I mean, it's really good. It's, it's very underrated. It's silly and outrageous, but really fun. Yeah. And it's, it's the film where Justin pulled someone's wig off in the cinema. He <laughs> was really what? Justin. No, no it wasn't. Though. Actually, you actually, you no, wanted, no, you it wasn't the. Uh, the I didn't pull pull him off in the cinema. <laughs> on, with, that, with that one, it was it was Quest for Fire. <laughs> We but didn't see, you want to originally see Halloween yes, 3? Yes, we want to see Halloween 3 originally, but it's Quest for Fire. And I was trying to find my seat, and I pulled off a toupee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Were you embarrassed? Well, I was, especially I was trying to put it back, and I, I think I put it on an old woman's head next next to him. So it got <laughs> even worse. How long ago was this? When did, how, 1983. How old was it? 1983, I assume. Jesus oh, okay. Christ. It was, it was terrible. I was blushing, but everything was dark. Yeah. So no one could see. Well, including blushing. your clothes, right? Yeah, you were goth and, back and, then. and lipstick. But I, w- yeah. I wouldn't be goth back then. No, not in '83. Oh, no. 85. Well, you were 14. You were probably hitting puberty. That's about the right time to be a goth, isn't it? Well, no, yeah, but it was. I was a more innocent time back then. No, it's about '85. Uh-huh. I went. I went black. 
Once you <laughs> you're know black, it. you never go back. <laughs> Just it like um, C. Thomas, Thomas Howell in Soul Man. Oh. Hey. Uh. One thing I wanted to mention about um, Halloween Resurrection is that uh, uh, the, I think Eric had mentioned it earlier. It was the whole bit with, uh, sh- was it Sean Patrick Flannery? Is that his name? Or Thomas? Sean Patrick or? Thomas, is this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I always laughed at that whole where he confronts Michael Myers and he's like, you just, you've had too much protein or something. He yeah. just thinks Michael Myers is bad because he's got a bad diet. I just, God. I watched that this week and I, I laughed, you know, until I, my stomach hurt. I was like, this is just so stupid. Well, said, well I have a bad diet that, and it hasn't um, affected me. Wibble, wibble, wibble. You also <laughs> said that Hitler was a vegetarian, which he wasn't. So he got yeah. it wrong back then. So. I thought he was. I thought he was a vegetarian. No. Or he's a pescatarian or something. I don't know. No, he was a vegan, like somebody else, so we know. <laughs> no, no, because he he did the whole thing of pretending to be pure and vegetarian, Eric, but he, he ate pigeon and uh, pig and all sorts of things, so he wasn't a Eric, you know there's two vegans on this show now, right? Yeah. yeah. What evs? Yeah. And one, Eric, I thought Eric was a vegan, too. I'm not a I vegan, no. He eats Kit Kats. Oh, he's not a vegan. Kit well, Kat. no. Yeah, okay. I eat dairy. Vegetarian, yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. Now, are veg- Justin, are you, you vegetarian are a resident now, Eric? Sorry, are you vegetarian oh. now? No, but I, I, I don't eat a lot of meat. So I eat a lot of dairy, though. Okay. Particularly chocolates. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justin, you are our uh, resident America's Next Top Model fanatic. Yeah. So, what? How do you assess Tyra Banks' performance in Halloween Resurrection? Well, the thing is, unfortunately, I used to be obsessed with America's Next Top Model, but of course now RuPaul's Drag Race has taken over. Um, yeah. And oh so, my goodness. Yeah, so it's kind of completely because I used to watch it all the time, and it's like it, you know, exchanging vapid models for like drag queens. There's no contest. <laughs> no, no um, contest. Yeah. yeah, but uh, Tyra, I think she's all she's all all right in this. It's what she needs to be. She doesn't really do anything. She just sits in front of a monitor the whole movie. And I had a question about her. Does she die? I mean, I kind of I thought she just yeah. kind of got written out and she disappeared. No, no you do. Dies. You see her body she's, hanging from the ceiling. She just like okay, misses misses yeah. what's her name from Halloween Two with the blood on the floor. And she's hanging above it. And yeah, there she is. She's, she's hanging there with, her, like, hanging from her neck, smizing. It's terrible. It's smizing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, she's totally smizing. She's fierce. <laughs> Justin, um, I just, yeah. just a quick thing, just out of curiosity, just uh, were you satisfied with the winner of this current season? What of uh, uh, RuPaul? All Stars. No. Yeah. Well, me kind either. Of. I kind of, I, I would have preferred Catcher. To be honest, me too. I, I love liked Katia. I liked um, Alaska, but the fact is they fucked it up with that tantrum. I thought Inga, oh. Inga moment. Yes, and Eric, it you was should pure watch Inga, the, uh, wasn't it? It's sure. pure Inga. <laughs> it's a total Inga moment. It's it was very so much an Inga moment and ridiculous. <laughs> it's so Inga. Have you not seen it, Eric? No, I haven't. No, I've only ever watched. I think I watched the first three seasons. And oh, you call yourself I haven't watched a homosexual? It, I haven't watched it in a while. Jesus I didn't Christ! Try, but I... I liked. Um, uh, I don't really watch it. I had a friend. I have a friend who kind of is obsessed with it, so I've seen a few episodes. But I like the Ginger Minge. Yeah, the, Ginger the Minge girl. got kicked yeah, out. She's okay too. She's yeah. got. She got she can kicked be funny. out quite early. You know, but me and Nathan, I think we're proper homosexuals, unlike um, Eric. Yeah, I like football. Um, My favorite. Uh, Justin, out of all of them, is always going to be Bianca Del Rio. I love oh, yeah. Bianca. She's such an she insults people so well. Have you seen Hurricane Del Rio? Or Hurricane no, Bianca? have you? No, not yet. I want to. I want to too. Stimulating conversation. Let's get back to Halloween resurrection. Yes, back to Halloween. Back to Halloween. Yes. So, should we go yeah. on to on to background? Yes. Who because has background? It's... Nathan, fill us in with your back. Fill me in with your background. I'll babe. fill you in with my background. Okay. Well, my background oh, is my a goodness. bunch of people in suits in an office said, "What's the stupidest way we can end Laurie Strode's character?" <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Let's just kill her off at the very beginning of the movie, you know, and uh, insult fans of the original. That is the perfect way to get people to want to watch the rest of this shit fest. Perfect. Wow. 
He is so angry this episode. Uh, you are. Mad about what they did to he's, a, he's an angry drunk. He's an angry drunk. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not an angry drunk. I'm angry about this movie, but I, tell you no, beats I love Lori. Lori is awesome. Can you guys agree with me that Lori was awesome in Halloween 1 and 2? Well, yeah, I love agree her. with that? I love yeah. her, but I actually preferred, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis in Terror Train, to be honest. Well, yeah. I mean, I just meant, like, did you like Lori, you know, in, in well, general? yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Justin? Mm-hmm. What? Did you like Laurie Strode? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought she would. Was you give her bit... one? No, but I, would, um, I thought she's a bit weak uh, in Halloween too. Um, yeah, she's, she's in well, the most. You would be too if you were right? drugged. <laughs> I'm always drugged. Oh, Christ, there's no funny. excuse. <laughs> Just work through it, girl. Eric, do you uh, do you do you know this quote? I'm so drunk. Oh, it's from Friends. Yeah, Phoebe. Phoebe. I actually, yeah. I do have feedback. I'm not feedback. <laughs> I got background. <laughs> well, do you really? I got background. Okay, I got real background, not just my opinion background. You're not, Jesus, um, Mary Chain. This was directed by Rick Rosenthal, who directed Swing Two. Which Swing. Unbelievably, Swing. surprises me. Is he like Swing. a bear or something? Swing. He is a bear. He plays the professor in the. Opening in sort of the post Jamie Lee Curtis scene. And and hold uh, on, it, hold in on. the university, on. he plays the professor. It's the Halloween. most, and he is smoking. It's just the most slash movie wow. <laughs> this episode moment in the, in the whole film, isn't okay. it? Because I see what you're saying. because the whole idea, it, you kind of, I love those ideas in, in slash movies where you have like a professor who tells a bored classroom basically all of the underlying. Sort of um, psychological defects. Yes, isn't it? yeah, I know. <laughs> I just got to say though, I expected more because I I love Halloween too. I love that movie. Yeah, and you know, like when I saw that he was directing this this newer one, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I guess I just thought it would be kind of more along the lines of Halloween. Too. We'll see. Not I really. think I think yeah. his direction's fine. It's just the script. I mean, the direction's just, not bad. The script yeah. is all over the place. Yeah, but also and you okay. no, realise... There's, there's no Rick Rosenthal shower scene either, which is That's a shame. That's my compliment. But you my do realise that, Rick, that John Carpenter came back in and, and directed new scenes because it was so boring, Halloween 2, R- R- Rosenthal. He came in and... Why are, you, direct... why are you dissing Rick Rosenthal now? Well, because he's he's made... John Carpenter watched Halloween 2, the original cut, and said it's not scary. You're just doing this to get at me, aren't you? This is just, it's just all about me. I'm sorry, it's nothing, it's, it's just like, uh, it's nothing to do with fat people directing movies. It's just kind of like... It, it is! Just, it just wasn't, it wasn't <gasps> good. Justin! It wasn't Pat good! Shaming. Justin, I mean, it's, it's a you of, It's a matter of record. For goodness sake, it's a matter of record. <laughs> you know... Oh. Anyway, Nathan, continue with your feedback. Okay, well, AKA background. he um, directed Halloween 2, Did. which had, you know, uh, Michael Myers in it. And then he directed this one, which also had Michael Myers in it. So, you know, I mean, I, I prefer Halloween 2 to this one, obviously. Well, I think we all do. That is my tuppence. Even you, because I thought that, I mean, you seem to really like this one. I, 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 to say I really like it is probably an overstatement. I mean, I appreciate it. What's your favourite movie, it's, it's, Eric? Sorry? It's your favourite movie. It's not my favourite movie. It's your favourite movie. As well. It is. You've got a tattoo. You've got a tattoo. You talk to me like that, you chalk-faced whore. <laughs> when do you want it? Yard. Um, it's better than four and six. I'll say that much for it. Okay. Ooh, tumbleweed. They're kind of on par for me because I'm not a huge fan of four at all. But part five is, I think part five is better than this one. I'll have to say that. Yeah, I thought, pro- yeah, probably I would say that. This doesn't have Tina. No, uh, but it does have Rick Rosenthal in it. Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah. Bing. He went to, he directed Bad Boys as well, which has Ali Sheedy in it. And incidentally, I talk about Ali Sheedy on Meep's latest podcast, Retro Movie Podcasts. I thought that had, uh, I thought that was Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> so young, so naive. You're a year older than I am. Shut up. <laughs> I don't have any more background, aka okay. feedback. So I'm sorry. I apologize to fans. Joseph, um, I have a big penis. Do you have any feedback? Uh, your feed. My feedback is that I've seen your penis and it's very small. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to the men. I fucked. Oh my Pardon? god! Oh my god! Eric, like that's how much body, have you had to drink for you, tonight, Eric? Oh, wow. Eric. <laughs> 
Probably a bit too much, but hey You've let yourself can down. Just, You've let history continues down. Funnest, epi- funnest episode ever. Funnest. Funnest. Yeah. Funnest. <laughs> Don't get yeah. at me. But anyway, I do have some background information. Right. Uh, we were talking about Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, basically, she agreed to do the part, but only to make sure her character, <laughs> uh, Laurie Strode, or herself in quotations, uh, wouldn't appear in another sequel. Uh, at the time of the film's initial, initial release, uh, executive producers uh, Malik Akkad and Mustafa Akkad uh, tried to explain it by claiming that Jamie Lee Curtis was so impressed with the screenplay that she wanted a large part in it. She, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that she, makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, she publicly stated that that was not the case, but she was only under contract to do it, and she just wanted to kill her character off so, so she could be done with it. Well, um, well, I'm, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just kind of curious. Did did she basically want her character to be killed off, or did she just say she yeah, wanted to be done with the series? Both. I mean, she she wanted to kill her character off, so there was no way that she could come back. I mean, oh. if they can bring Michael back, they can bring her back. But you know, she, yeah, she, it's more along okay. the lines of, hey, I don't want to do any more Halloween movies. Well, I, I think I got, um, I I got think, Activia um, commercials to do or whatever. If I recall correctly from the H2O episode last year, I think she was contractually obliged to do a sequel if they uh, if they wanted to do one. So yeah, but it was only oh. one. She she only had like <sighs> one left on her contract, so you know, yeah, it's like not a full length. I think it's just like you know a cameo role. Curse those filthy contracts. Curse as, as, them. Sad, as sad as it is, I mean, she's really good in the opening scene. It's just uh, mm. it's just kind of an unfitting way for her to go out. I just don't like her hair. Yeah, it's kind of. At least it's not a wig. True. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Several uh, endings were written during production, and the cast was never sure how the film was actually going to end. Uh, I think it's four different endings were filmed, uh, and Rick Rosenthal wanted the studio to ship a different Drink. ending. To, he wanted the studio to ship a different ending to each theater, a technique that was used uh, before during the theatrical release of Clue from 1985. Um, however, the studio disagreed, and the endings now appear on the DVD and the internet. Um, you can probably find those online somewhere. Uh, actor Kyle Labine, who appears as a party goer in the film, uh, also what's, starred what's as a. Uh, background. Bi- what? What did you say, Justin? What's playing in the background? Nothing. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything either. He's drunk. Oh my God! You're hearing <laughs> no, music. Hear, it's like, voice. It's, it's kind of like whale sounds. Quit it might have been a passing liquor soaked olives. Oh, it no. might have been a passing car. I have a lot of traffic. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Fuck, what the fuck? I don't hear any whale soon. I live in the city, so it's probably a lot of traffic. Anyway, yeah, so. the city. I don't hear any whale sounds. Oh Jesus, Justin, what have you been drinking? I don't know. It's something North Dirty Ch- Martinis. No, there's it's some North kind of weird Ch- thing going on. Oh, what? I don't know. Whale sounds? Seriously, what? Justin? Hold on. What no, a train! No, there's some weird thing going on in the background. You may not hear this. It's something. Some kind of like weird '90s infomercial. Oh God, I know what he's doing. Oh, oh, oh! What? What? What's he doing? He really? Nobody told me. What's he doing? What's he doing, Joseph? Explain. It's, all I can hear is someone saying a constant bombardment, bombardment of nonsense. I don't know what it is. Can you hear it? He's about to play. He's about to play Toya. Oh. I'm trying to find out where oh it's coming from. Oh my god, are you? If you dare to insinuate Toya, <laughs> hold on, no, no, I'm no. Kill you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut some things down because God knows what where it's coming from. Hold on, um, could it be iTunes. He's drunk. Hold on, he's or he's, so he's, he's, just oh, it's gone now. He's pulling you. He's pulling you off. No, but doing. iTunes is gone. But pulling? I, where the fuck that came from? I don't know. It's kind of some like weird '90s infomercial, and it's going constant. Bombardment of denial. Are you actually from? being serious? Yeah, no, I was. I, t- I don't know if it recorded, but sorry, I do wow. apologise. This is this oh. is the cra- craziest episode ever. You're the drunkest gay lord I know. <laughs> anyway, um, let me try this again. Um, Let's try try that again. Yeah. Actor Kyle Labine, who appears as a party goer in the film, uh, also starred as Bill Freeberg in Freddy vs. Jason. So this technically makes him the first person ever to appear in a Michael, Jason, and Freddy film. Although Jason and Freddy film was one film. But anyway. And um, that's all the background I actually have on the film. Okay. Justin, I've got an amazing set of buttocks. Do you have any uh, feedback for us? (laughs) (laughs) It's not what I've heard. What? I've heard they're like a couple of wobbly bronzes. 
Um, well, you've seen him in person. Don't you dare compare my buttocks to Blamanges. Well, apparently you've seen him in person, right. Justin. I have seen. He couldn't them. keep his hands off my buttocks. I, I had I to call call the police. I, I had to go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't believe he anyway. heard anything. I think he was trying to set up a Toya joke or he's just drunk. Yeah. No. I was going to say, uh, okay, anyway, um, it's talking about some of the cast, uh, Ryan Merriman, who played Miles Deckard, he's best known for t- portraying Jake in Ring 2, um, a.k.a. That's Ring. Eric's, <laughs> Eric's uh, nickname. Um, and hey. Kevin Fisher in uh, Final Destination 3. Um Katie Sackoff, who played the uh, Jennifer, uh, Jen Danzag, who could look a little bit like Brittany Murphy, I thought. Yeah, I kind of um, I kind of wanted her to sack me off a little bit. Oh, for goodness <laughs> Which sake. character was she? How did she die in the film? She was the blonde. She, she was got, the, uh, she got the blonde uh, fame seeker. Oh, yeah. I thought she looked a bit like Tori Spelling, to be honest. She looked a bit like Brittany Murphy to me, who was obviously in uh, the, uh, Cherry Falls. But she um, she's also, she went on to be an Oculus the uh, relatively new Haunted Mirror movie. Oh, right, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so, uh, um, apart from that, I have got loads of uh, stuff, but it's all kind of stuff that I think uh, Joseph's already said. So, Eric, okay. what have you got for us? I have some stuff. Okay, it was shot in Vancouver, which makes it yeah. a Canadian production, which ties into something we did earlier today, which I can't mention. Um, It was shot in Vancouver in uh, 2001. Originally, Miramax wanted a mirrorless sequel, but Trancas International convinced them that this this would not work, um, citing the failure of Halloween 3 as an example. Uh, A a director called Whitney Rancic, who is actually a man, not a woman, uh, was meant to direct but was fired from the project close to the start of filming. Uh, he went on to work mostly in TV, working on Justin's favourite TV show, Supernatural. Justin does not like this TV show for its content, but for other reasons. Um, oh, he yes. also went on to direct for Smallville and Tremor. You do like it for other reasons, Justin, don't you deny it? <laughs> what kind of ooh, yes, does... Uh... Oh, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Sorry. <laughs> I only heard, yeah, I didn't hear our ooh, but not ooh, yes. Yeah, I didn't hear so. the yes, sorry. Sorry, Justin, I apologise. Jensen you know, Ackles. Like, yeah. Yum. And the other, do you like both of them, don't you? Or is it just Jensen Ackles? Uh, a filling of a sandwich, I could say, but yes. Uh. <laughs> I think that Jensen's, like, the more attractive, if I'm being yeah. honest. There, I mean, I wouldn't kick either one of them out of um, bed, but uh, Jensen's, like, the better, you know, looking one, in my opinion. Yeah, I want to be I want to be sandwiched by Rick Rosenthal and somebody else fat and hairy from the Halloween series that I can't think of right now. Yeah. Well, you might like the you would be squashed like a pita bread, though, wouldn't the, you? Uh, with that, Eric might like it? the guy in Supernatural who plays the dad. I think he's the dad character. He's also in mm-hmm. Harper's Island. But what he's, did you say, Justin? A, a, he's a big hairy guy. You'd be you squashed like a pita bread if you stuck between those two fatties. I want I want to be a. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, as I mentioned in the podcast last year for when we did H2O, um, they had the whole, it wasn't Michael Myers, but it was actually some dazed and fused paramedic twist. It was actually devised while they were filming H2O as a get-out clause if they decided they wanted to make a sequel. Um, as M- Mustafa Akkad had told them that they couldn't kill off his prime asset because, of course, you know, the Akkad family were relying on Michael Myers for their income. Uh, it was shot under the title Halloween, The Homecoming, and there's, there was actually a work print under that title, circulating on the internet prior to the release of Halloween Resurrection, and I had a copy of it on a VCD, which was a very ancient format, which was uh, CD-based back in the day, uh, but I can't, couldn't put my hands on it. You are Mrs. Um, I couldn't find it, uh, pro, you know, for the recording, for the recording of this podcast. But um, it w- apparently it was fairly close to the final cut, apart from the opening sequence, which was it featured some Super 8 footage of a young Michael Myers with his family at a family barbecue. Um, the original concept, and this you might want to close your ears for this, uh, Nathan, but the original concept for the Laurie Strode character was that she was so, to be so stricken with grief and remorse over what she did to the poor paramedic that she was supposed to commit suicide. <gasps> oh, Sorry about that. But you fortunately, know, I might yeah. could have even handled that better than what they <laughs> did, because at least then she's going out on her own terms. Yeah. Uh, as as Joseph was saying, that Rick Rosenthal wanted to release the film with four different endings to give the film a kind of gimmick, and then sort of have it randomly 
circulate with four different endings so that people going into the cinema wouldn't know what ending they were going to get, um, which I think would have been quite quite a good gimmick to do. And I'm not surprised more people haven't you know jumped on that bandwagon. Um, it, one of the uh, the alternate endings that, that Joseph was mentioning that are all available on the DVD and Blu-ray. One of them has Deckard, Deckard arrives and saves her from the burning building, and Buster Rhymes dies in the end. You'll be glad to hear, Nathan. Um, another one has the crime scene investigator who look. There's a crime scene, a female crime scene investigator that looks. Sorry, I'm very drunk now and I'm slurring my words. Um, oh well. She looks down a man. She, she looks down a manhole. You were. And, uh, <laughs> like Myers you, Eric. Appears, <laughs> oh my god, uh, they have a man so, Sometimes I look up them either as well. I bet you um, do. When they're sitting in my face. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> so uh, there's this female crime scene investigator, and this is the way the, the work print version of Halloween The Homecoming ends is that uh, this crime scene investigator looks down a manhole, and Michael Myers appears from the steam and grabs her. Um, there's another alternate ending where Buster Rhymes says his famous, you're looking like some crispy fried motherfucker there, Michael Myers. Uh, and Michael Myers grabs him by the throat and Sarah then um, grabs an axe from the fire truck and sticks it in his head. Uh, the, the film was originally scheduled to be released on September 21st, 2001, but Miramax wanted to uh, make it a bit more intense and insisted on some reshoots, so it was bumped back to the summer of 2002. Um, the Kung Fu character that Buster Rhymes mentioned so often, Wat Chung Lee, uh, was completely made up, improvised by Buster Rhymes, unbeknownst to Rick Rosenthal, who assumed it was some established Kung Fu artist. Uh, the budget of the film was 13 million, and it made a pretty decent 37 million at the box office, which was a pretty nice profit for the filmmakers, um, considering it ended up looking like a, a directed DVD movie, as I said. Um, and that is all the background I think I have for the film for now. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, overall, in a couple of words, just your final thoughts on the film. I think the film is uh, underappreciated. I think people might want to reassess it after seeing the two Rob Zombie abominations that followed. Um, it's it's light years ahead of both Rob Zombie's Halloween and Halloween 2. Uh, it's not a great film, but I think it has cheesy charm. And as uh, Justin's other half said, I think in 10 years' time, people will probably look back on it as a cheesy classic. I would agree not, with that. Not, and not, just, not a classic, but a cheesy yeah, film. That's I would fun. agree exactly with what you said, just to add that it's just so bad it's good. Justin? Uh, uh, well, yeah, it is, as, as saying, it's probably in 10 years' time, I think we'd probably reevaluate it as a, like a, a fun film. But I, I, for some reason, I thought it was older than it was, but it's not actually that old, is it? But it's kind of, well, it? 14, 14 years is quite 14 old. 14 years. Yeah. It's not that old. Um, it's not well, like 15 well, when, I, when, I, when I think back so. when I think back to if you think back to 1995 that was my second year of, of university and yeah. uh, that would have been the same distance between then and 1981 which is the golden era of the slasher movie happy birthday to me Friday the 13th part 2 yeah my bloody valentine it's the same, same um, time span so 14 yeah. years is quite long but it's not uh, it just hasn't got quite that vintage yet I don't think. No, think it doesn't. That, it doesn't. No, no. no. So, I but I think agree. when it comes to it, I think we can look past it. I, I think there's enough in there to find it entertaining, um, and if you can look past the annoyances of Buster Rhymes and all that shit, then uh, I think in you said it's on street years, there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But in five you're like Honey time, G. I, I, like Ali G. <laughs> <laughs> honey Fuck G, you, you whore. Um, it's kind of like um, it will be probably quite good fun so you know who knows nathan are you still awake no i'm awake oh here we go come on the cutting sum up your your feelings on halloween resurrection okay um you tried to kill laurie strode off fuck you (gasps) that's my feeling oh my god he swore he actually you too you whore the only time i will swear is when i'm very very feeling strongly about something and I had to say the F word because I feel very strongly about how much I care about Lori. He's the Rob Zombie friend of mine. Podcast. And then they killed, they tried to kill her. He's the, the Rob, Rob Zombie of the podcast. Totally is yeah. the Rob Zombie of the podcast. You're like yeah, Lori Strode in the Halloween Zombie. remake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, don't call me that. 
That's like the worst insult ever. How dare you? (laughs) If you were here right now, I would throw my glass of cardboard dough on you. (laughs) Put it in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Throw it in your mouth. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Justin, please. This is a family show. Justin, I'm not that yeah, kind of doctor. There are the wine. I'm talking to about show. the wine, for Christ's sake. Well, somebody think of the children. <laughs> think of all the young children listening to this episode. Oh, God, this is the best episode ever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, what's next? Sorry, Nathan. Okay. Oh, well, oh. Uh, me? What? Huh? Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's next. I'll tell you what's next. Yeah, I don't know. Um, um, make something uh, up. Um, quick, quick. Um, Halloween. Um, pumpkin. Um, um Jamie Lee pumpkin, Curtis. Uh, bad uh, poem. Buster Rams. Um, uh, you got who's, who's the best poet in Halloween Resurrection? Buster Rams. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have you got your tongue down? And remember, you can bounce your ball at the same time. Thank you, guys, all I want from you. Have you got your tongue down? And remember, you can bounce your ball at the same time. I like your joke. Thank you. Even if you were kind of mean not, in this not podcast. Bad. I wasn't not bad for being on the whore. fly. <laughs> <laughs> you said you whore. Well, I always say well, you whore. That's kind it's of a compliment, catch- though. It's my no, I, I like being called a whore. It means I'm somewhat attractive. Yay. Uh, you like to be slapped around, I'm sure. Well, a little bit. So. So, Justin. Um, so, let, let's <laughs> kind of like, um, let's, uh, how to get in touch with the show. Hold on. You can see what the trouble is, can't you? That's not how you get in touch with the show. No, Joseph will tell us. He's got a Halloween music one. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Justin. It took me a long time to get all that in there. That's not, That's not the contact information. Oh, hold on, give me a chance, Christ. When you press the right fucking button. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, he raised his voice. Listen to he the Hysteria continues on iTunes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. Yes. You can email us directly at the Hysteria Continues at gmail.com. Keyword the Hysteria Continues. You know what? Joseph, wow. when he does that, when in that one, he sounds like he's in one of those like 900 channel like he late jumped. night ads. It's like that's call what us now. That's what I was going for. <laughs> it's my sexy recording. Call us now. <laughs> Only ninety nine dollars per minute. I'm still laughing because Justin raised his voice. That's just great. Well, yeah. we were kind of ragging on him, so I kind of understand why really he had exactly. to raise his voice. <laughs> What's the boy supposed okay, to do? Okay, uh, feedback. Who wants to go first? Well, I don't have any. I have one. Any. Eric, okay. go first. You go first. Go first. Okay. This one is from somebody called Ari Al- Ara Alishan. I've never heard of him. Have you? Me either. No. Who's that? I've never heard of Ara Alishan. Ara Alishan. Who on earth is Ara Alishan? Yeah. Never heard of Mike. Apparently, he has a brother called Michael. Um, he says, hello again, gentlemen. It's been ages since I provided proper listener feedback, Facebook comments notwithstanding. But I recently watched a new release called Fender Bender and felt compelled to write in and give you some love to the folks over at Scream Factory who provided a much needed boost to the slasher genre. Fender Bender is full of modern tropes that scream 2016, yet it manages to feel like a fun throwback, especially the retro VHS cut, which I hope becomes a regular staple of Scream Factory releases. This is not a flawless film by any means, but if you're a fan of the genre, it's worth watching and judging for yourself. <laughs> what? You just, said flawless, <laughs> you just said flawless film. Did I? You also said film instead of film. Yeah, oh, film, Eric. No, in fairness, <laughs> Christ. Film is a common, film is a common uh, Irish uh, mispronunciation of film. Oh, okay. In fairness to myself, because I am Irish. Personally, I'm glad I gave it a chance and will proudly place it on my shelf among the slashers of yesteryear. On the non-slasher front, I would also love to hear your thoughts on Don't Bre- Don't... <sighs> okay. Compose myself. On don't, don't take a deep breath. breathe. Take a deep breath. Yes. On don't don't breathe. 
<laughs> this was far and away my favorite horror movie of 2016, and unlike Fender Bender, which I stumbled onto without any expectations, I'd been anticipating Fede Alvarez's next project since his remake of The Evil Dead, and it somehow still managed to blow me away. I'm hoping for some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I know. He said, blow me away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for more collaborations from Alvarez and Jane Levy down the road. Moving on, I'm uncertain when you're recording the Child's Play 1 and 2 po- episodes, which will probably be in 2018 by the, Who knows the rate we're going. Be when, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on one of my f- listener picks. Let the record show that this is m- the first of my picks selected for the show. I just thought I'd show that, that out there before my... I just thought... I'd, Oh, I'm too Christ. drunk. I can't. I can't cope with this email. Come on, Eric. <laughs> I just thought I'd show that out. I just thought I'd show that out there before my fellow. Oh, oh <laughs> this, no! This doesn't make sense. There's, oh there's my no goodness! Come on, Eric. Persevere. I can't go. You can do it. He's gonna cry. We believe in you. <laughs> you can do Come it. On. I just Come on. Come on. Get that your out lips there round it. Come on. Lin- I just, I just thought I'd throw that out there before my fellow listeners lynch me up for my brother's sins. In brackets, Bloodhook, Boogeyman, and Hollywood's New Blood. Well, I think Boogeyman is not a sin. Boogeyman's not a sin. Yeah, but Bloodhook and Hollywood's New Blood, bloody well are. <laughs> yeah. well, I thought, I thought too fucking were. right. I thought Boogeyman was a sin, but that's no, just no, no. Uh, and Bloodhook's not a sin. Now, now Hollywood's New Blood, not a man. <laughs> Bloodhook was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. It is. What can well, I say? There's one in every family. I'll Front cut him a cast. break, though. So he, he picked Alien, Suspiria, and the, the Terminator as well, so I suppose it balances out. That's all Not for now. Not really. That's, that's all for now. <laughs> the slightly less pesky Alassane brother. Alashan brother. Ara. <laughs> My God, that was really tough to get through. Well, Sorry, thank you. well done. Oh, this is oh, okay. Ages. So, don't he asked what our thoughts are on Don't Breathe, which I have not seen. Has I've anyone not seen, seen it yet? I've not seen it either. either. No, you it saw was it? Good. Yeah, Nathan. it was good. And I think that, I mean, here's the thing though it's getting a lot of great reviews. So, I'm afraid too many people are going to watch it and think, you know, it's you know, they're, they're going to expect a lot out of it. When really, I just thought it was just a fun time waster. I mean, it's not anything, you know it's not going to blow your mind or anything. You know, it's not going to make you like, you know, blow your, like your blo- mind. Your load. Blow your load. It's not going to blow your mind. Your mind. Oh, no, It's not going to make Nathan. you blow your mind. Christ. It's not going to make you do that either, okay? <laughs> um, well... Uh, Mark Kermode is a uh, very famous film critic from the UK who has a film show every Friday on BBC Radio 5, and he was saying that halfway through the film it turns into a, kind of a torture porn movie. Is that well, correct? I mean, kind of, but not. I mean, it's not like you're watching a Saw movie. I mean, mm. I, I don't. I wouldn't apply torture porn to it. I mean, yeah, there might be a little bit of torture, but mostly it's mostly like a cat and mouse, you know, stalking kind of film. I mean, for for the most part. So, I mean, I don't want you guys to think it's like cat and mouse for the first forty five minutes and the last forty five minutes is somebody chained up being tortured for till the end of the movie. It's not like that. Mm. Well, it's one of, I'm interested in seeing. Um, I haven't been to the cinema now since probably April. I think it was the last time I was in the cinema. Um, just I live so far away from the local multiplex, the local multiplex, I call it, um, that I haven't been to the cinema in so long. So, But it's one I'll definitely catch when it comes out on Blu-ray or DVD or other means. Oh. Um, what? I, iTunes, I mean. What, what do you think I meant? I thought you meant downloading it. Yeah, yeah. on iTunes. Oh. Well, okay. Right. Like paying legitimately for it for three ninety nine for a forty eight hour rental. You're too legit. How dare you insinuate <laughs> that I am do piracy and all that? He is too legit. Too He's legit. Too quit. legit. Quit. I know. Yeah. Hey, hey. He's too shy, shy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shush, I, I. and Child's Play 1 and 2 is our next episode, I think. Yeah, it's it? going to be great. Yeah, it, it was going to be this episode, but we had to get the Halloween episode in, so it'll be next yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Had to get it out of the way, well, because because we've had to shoehorn in a big one, haven't we, Eric? Um, we've had the commentary. We've had a commentary for a big title that we've covered on the podcast. We can't re- we can't announce that yet, can we? No, no I don't, I think, don't so. think we can. No. But it's like uh, possibly all I can say. All I can say is probably uh, one of the the biggest slasher movie titles that you can imagine. 
and and then, uh, and then download it thought, by a couple. But I thought um, the actual recording session went very well this morning. Yes, I had a lot of fun considering it was two hours long, I did. and I was wearing pants for it, which I'm not doing now. <gasps> Eric, gosh, oh, that's too warm in here. It's not warm. It's fucking okay. October. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What have you got the heat? Oh my God, Justin! And this is a video podcast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you want to switch? I, I can switch the video on if you want to see me naked. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You want me to switch it on? Because I, I can do it. Well, thanks for listening. We've and, uh, already we'll seen you naked, Eric. <laughs> but exactly. I, I, you said one of the listeners is saying there was, they, they could see like a, an angry clam. <laughs> Why don't we just post the pictures that Eric sent us? <gasps> don't you dare. <laughs> they're, they're for your private use at night time. That's your private use. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> okay, I have some feedback if, any, if we want to move on. Yeah, Thank you. Sorry, Make it I a think good we one. should. I think we should before anyone like takes a screen snap of that uh, that butter mushroom and a, a, a ginger toupee. <laughs> okay, uh, this one says, uh, "Hello, gentlemen. Just a oh my god, Eric. Oh no, no, Eric, what? stop. Do you not see this? No. What's he doing? <laughs> oh my He's god, just it was a video." video. It was a video. I he's just naked. He's naked. He's no. Topless and he's making vagina licking <laughs> motions. Oh. Yeah, he's doing like vagina lips. I think he's crashed my video. I can't see anything. God. Where? God. I have, I have that effect on the internet. I break Eric, the internet. I, just like I missed all of that. I'm oh. shocked an apple. Okay, Justin, if you missed out. Here I you missed go. all of that. Oh, no. All I can see is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I see God. Eric's face. Oh. What's that? Uh, oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't, oh, don't go down nipple. south. No, no, <laughs> nipple. Oh, no. Christ. Thank oh, you. Oh, I keep on saying, it's like. The, well, oh. you did not dare me to drink tonight, and this is the consequences. It's your own fault. And what's funny is at the beginning of the episode, Eric said, I'm probably not going to have that much to drink tonight. Now he probably. As the episode the, goes on. Yeah. Oh, the alcohol yep. kicks in. Well, yeah, all I, I can say is, Justin. thankfully, there's no happy finish. <laughs> oh, my yet. God. Okay. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, you got feedback, feedback don't you, yeah. Justin? All, this I is, saw, um, all I saw was Eric's tongue suddenly poked out the screen at me. It was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> he had his two fingers up, and he was putting his uh, lick, uh, no, his, his tongue between the two fingers. I know. <laughs> like, he's, like he's going down on a girl. Yep. Exactly, and I can't imagine Eric knows anything about that. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. So, do you think well, we're I do, up to... I do, Eric. <laughs> I bet you do, Joseph. Do you think we're we're living up to Drunkcast? I think yes. we kind of are. The first, the first twenty. Th- oh no, he's doing. It oh, again. Eric. <laughs> oh no, not oh, again. Eric. All I can see now, I can see Joseph's face. Oh, no, but... I see Eric putting his finger in his mouth and sucking on it. <laughs> Can I just remind you, we're at two hours and five minutes. I wonder if fans will like this. He's sucking or his not. fingers. He's filleting his fingers right I now. I can't see any oh, of this. Eric. All I can see, all suddenly Eric's visage pops out and it's gone again now. But anyway, uh, I yes. think, Eric, can you put it away and let Joseph <laughs> carry on? Put it away. <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, the first 20 minutes, I thought, you know, maybe we'd have a sip. But my God, this has turned into a nightmare. <laughs> I'm actually having fun because I'm yeah, great, I am too. so it's kind of fun too, yeah. to me. It's quite anyway, fun. It's um, quite fun. But let me let me read this feedback. I'm just glad I've got feedback. work tomorrow. It, Jesus Christ, it's kind of like I don't have to work tomorrow. No, I, I have, have to work tomorrow. I have to work till, oh, have to work till midnight tomorrow. <gasps> oh my oh. god. Anyway, um, this feedback says, "Hello, gentlemen. Just a fan here that wanted to drop by and say that I absolutely adore your show. It's inspired me to go back to childhood and revisit some old classics and some not so classics. Thanks, Nathan. Aside from that, I was wondering if you could. <laughs> Aside from that, I was wondering if you could be so kind as to review a very low budget short slasher film that I'll be making very soon called Helldresser, about a hairstylist gone insane, like Sweeney <laughs> Todd meets Friday the Thirteenth. It would Nathan be very make a movie like that." Hairdresser yeah, Massacre. Yeah. Anyway, he says, um, it would be very much appreciated to hear your opinions and any constructive criticism. On a final note, Susie is superior to the ancient mummy that Eric likes. Thank nope. you, Ken. <gasps> Yay. Oh, 
He says, thank you again, Aloysius, Aloysius. I don't know what his name is, but um, I'm guessing I'm guessing after that snipe at Eric, Eric's not going to watch your movie. But why would you call Toya a mummy? <clears throat> why? She's not a mummy. She doesn't have any children. She's an ancient crone. I guess. I don't know. She's going to like a desiccated husk. I imagine that's fair enough. <laughs> like a corn husk? Well, kind a of. corn? But something you find in a cemetery... Um, oh my god, no! no. Put my, oh, oh my god! It's like seeing Eric it's like is Nick. literally topless and he's rubbing his oh, nipples. Eric. I'm telling you, we're not making this up. This is actually happening. It's like nipples in a pulsating cornfield. Oh. Eric, you got a tattoo? <laughs> I didn't know you had I do. Yeah, yeah, Eric's got a tattoo. I have two on his tattoos. Arm. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't understand why you suddenly pop up on my screen like you kind of. Oh no, Eric! Because he's doing his his penis. I did not no. show you my penis. Yes, Justin, you did. did you have don't tattoos? be lying. I did not. No, he didn't. You you wouldn't really see it on on the webcam. <laughs> hey, you would. I'm telling you, you would. Shh! Don't don't encourage him, Justin. Justin, do you have tattoos? No. So you're the only one in this podcast that doesn't have tattoos. No. I'm yeah, pure, loser. It's driven snow. I've never I've never kissed a girl. And I've never had a drink. Also, you've it. never kissed a girl in your life. Never. You have. Oh, I have. I have actually. Yes. Because <gasps> even I've done that. What's it, Susie? No, it wasn't Susie. Eric. Have you ever snogged with a girl? No. No. I have. Well, I like I like so, bears, which are the so, polar opposite of girls. So I you have were ne- too. You were never cl- you were you were never closeted. You were just always bear. Bear. I was always about the bears. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, who's got I, more feedback? I've got more feedback. I don't have okay. Any feedback. Okay. Did you finish yeah. yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He just basically wanted us to review his movie, and then he slagged off Eric. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm, he's not going to watch his movie. Anyway, I'd be uh, yeah. If you want to see your movie, your, though, if you want to send your short film in to us, we'll we'll take a look at it and give you. Our I like hairdresser movies. I hope scissors go into somebody's head because that's so cool. <laughs> I hope there's a shoe rack. <gasps> oh God, yes. I mean, well, I hope everybody will beat. Is my Hazel Tankersley in it? <gasps> She's the only hairdresser, her and her sister. Yeah. Um, Justin, do you have feedback? I do. I'm trying to get onto it. Jesus Christ, stop interrupting me, Nathan. Fine, get off on it. <laughs> onto it. I was only, do- I was only, I was, <laughs> I was only doing that to, oh, no. to wind you up. Back. Oh. Who's back? <laughs> Eric, look at the trying to do your feedback now, Justin. I could, I missed it. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's oh, like Busty god. Morgan. It's like no, no. He's like got Chest- a nice Blu-ray collection back oh, there. I it's do. like Chesty Morgan crossed with Grizzly. <laughs> it's Grizzly <laughs> Adams oh, and Chesty Morgan. It's you terrifying. want to know the sad thing? The sad what? thing is, I'm probably hairier than Eric. That's the tr- that's probably true. How <laughs> how could you possibly be hairier than Eric? Because that's kind of like. Oh. You could like backcomb that oh and make the Eiffel Tower. I'm, I'm full of the testosterone, baby. I have anyway, to who's... wonder if everybody will be sitting, listening to this, thinking, <laughs> "I wonder what exactly they're seeing." It's you like, don't want to know. You, you should know. never, you should never get me to drink while I'm on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. Never. It's going to be a five-hour show. Come on, let me get on this to this is, next feedback. This Come is on. The first and last drunk, drunk yeah. cast. Probably. Well, maybe we'll see. We'll see what the reviews are like if anyone listens to it. The fans, um, yeah. What they okay. Let me, okay, let Justin, me, let me get I'm on with it. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, hey guys. I recently discovered your podcast through the Dread Central article, so you gained at least one listener. Probably lost a few this time, but I'm hooked. I was looking for a podcast to listen to at the gym, and yours has fit the bill. I've been listening for a month or so, but I've already cranked through 30 or so episodes. Sorry, Eric, I'm sadly less Bob Hoskinsy due to all the extra working out I've been doing. So not one for you, Eric, I'm, I'm afraid. No. No, I'm excited to hear you'll be covering Child's Play. There is a neat little 90s subgenre of small killers, such as Leprechaun, uh, Child's Play, Puppet Master, Inga, uh, Ginger, Dead Man. Inga. Uh, no, I'll put that in. Um, uh, that you've, you haven't small. really gotten to. Granted, it's not exactly the best material, but it'd be fun to listen to nonetheless. As, as far a listener pick, I'd love to hear you cover Driving Massacre. A lot of people hate this movie, 2.9 on AMDB, but I think it's fantastic. My crystal balls, or ball, sorry, tells me Nathan likes it too. 
For 1976, um, I thought the beheadings were great. The acting was par, at least. Uh, the score had a synthy feel uh, that seems very 80s. I uh, wish had a final girl instead of a couple of fat middle-aged final men, but otherwise, I love it. Um, I imagine, do you love a couple of fat middle-aged uh, men, Eric? <laughs> well, duh. Which movie? Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Drive-In um, Massacre. Um, Drive-In Massacre. Oh, it's great. Okay, yeah, I do love it. Okay, Justin, sorry. Well, also because I did, I did do a retrospective uh, through eighty-eight films of Driving Massacre. So if you want to see that, me talking about that film, um, but uh, I'm sure we will get around to it at some point because I imagine, like, yeah, Nathan would love that movie. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, yes. Um, I don't think I've seen it. You've not seen it? Okay. Well, let no, me, but let have me... you got middle-aged men as the final girls? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think you'd be, mm-hmm. you'd be straight on that, wouldn't you? Um, yeah. I can imagine if you go down to HMV and splash out on it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, it carries on. I so I know you have a ton of picks to get to, but I thought you could cover that before my fiftieth birthday in twenty thirty five. If it would mean a lot, keep up the great work, Kevin. P.S. Nathan will be jealous. I saw Criminally Insane in theatres this summer. Got to love the Alamo <gasps> Draft House here in Austin. Judging by how much I ate during the movie, I expect crazy fat Kevin might be a movie soon. So that's Kevin. Oh, Thank you. As new listener. I love Criminally Insane. Yeah, and Kevin, the new listener. So, thank you, Kevin. A something yes. for us yes. all there. Thank you, Kevin. And sorry, this may be the last episode he listens to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that may go through all of the... Well, I can't believe be fair, that we... We teased this for years. It had to happen eventually. It did. Yeah. It did. I'm um, glad it finally did happen, to be honest, because yeah, I mean, we fine. talked about it long enough. Yeah. <clears throat> well... Uh, do you think we will ever get to the uh, the, the Rob Zob- Zombie Halloween movies, or or no? Well, only, if we're, only if we're drunk. Again. Joseph says no, but <sighs> can we I, um... drink? Can we drink on it? Like we I think we'll week? have to. If, if we can I... drink, if we can make it a drunk cast, I'll do it. Otherwise, I won't do it. Well, how um, about because... how about we do it for mm-hmm. the next couple of years? We do a drunk cast every Halloween. Yeah, yeah. there you go. It'll fit the Rob Zombie Halloween. Yeah. If if the feedback well, I... is good. Yeah. If the feedback is good, yeah. yeah. Can yeah, I just warn you? What people think. Can I just warn you though that um, I bought the Scream Factory Halloween box set yeah. and rewatched Rob Zombie's two Halloween movies, and they were even worse than I remembered. <laughs> so. Well, exactly. Oh, That's man. what's good for the um, the drunk cast because then, like, we can rant. Like Nathan was ranting, wasn't he? You yeah, were ranting. Nathan. You were like <laughs> for the brain. Yeah, I mean, you, you want like, to hear some really real ranting drunk cast v- version? Then we'll just do the Halloween. Rob Zombie versions, and you'll really hear it from me. Well, exactly. I yeah. I'm, so I'm so drunk. I'm so drunk. Are you drunk? How many drinks have you had, Joseph? Well, I had, I had four beers, which four. You know, is 48 ounces, and that, that's like, you know, two is, you know, pushing it for me, but I had four, so. I'm not drunk at all. Totally. Yeah. Not. I'm sober. 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 I'm totally so bare. So bare. <gasps> You're so bare. Ooh. I'm so bare right now. So, Eric, how much have you had to drink? Um, Obviously I've a lot. Had, I've had about a quarter of a bottle of vodka. God damn. <laughs> My goodness. God. I'd be unconscious. Is that so, all? Yeah, I'm not going to be in the best of warm going to work tomorrow morning, but hey-ho. But it's okay. You've just got to go on and sort of pronounce things, haven't you? Well, fortunately, things. somebody somebody is training in with me tomorrow, so they'll be doing all the talking. Eric, I got, a, I got a question for you. You don't do this on the on your radio show, do you? I don't have a radio show as such. I'm I'm a continuity announcer, so. Well, you don't you don't announce your nipples on the radio, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. No, there's no okay. webcams in the studio, thankfully. Maybe Eric, I should you... try to get you fired and send the video to your to your boss. <laughs> you didn't record the video. Yeah, I did. <laughs> there you go. <gasps> Eric, did you just say you were a continuity announcer? Yes, I did, Justin. Ha 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 ha. But if you must know, the three days before my interview for my current job position, I twerked my boss in a drunken fit in, in a bar in Dublin. Yeah. And he slapped my arse as I was twerking him. Yeah. Because oh, we really? were both really drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened? There you go. And Sorry? you're what married. Happened? I got the job. When I, got the inter- when the, I was interviewed three days oh. later and I got the job. Is that kind of like a casting couch type thing? It kind of is. Kind of is. Well, that's there we go. Terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. 
Tricky. I guess uh, before we wrap this up, I should probably finish the uh, go to the next round of the game that I did on the last. Oh time. yeah. Yes. Did anyone game. guess it? Did anyone guess well, that it was? Well, um... okay. I guess the few people who played are waiting on pins and needles to see if they guessed right, and the answer is no one has guessed correctly yet. I... Some close. Some close guesses, but no one's guessed it yet. So I have three more clues for you. Okay. And um, the first clue is one of the director's previous films features a scene you can't look away from, like a train wreck. Clue number two is the killer is played by a lean actor. And the third and final clue is a keyword clue, and that is wheelchair. Oh. So there's your three new clues, and hopefully someone will get it this time. Is it the same movie? Yes, same movie. Oh, okay, okay. I won't, I won't say it then, because I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's because you've already had the answer, Nathan. Oh. Okay, well, I felt smart <laughs> for a minute. No, I because we, again. we already know what the answer is. I think, don't we? Yeah, it's Pearl it, Harbor, isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it Beaches? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, Beaches. It is, it's... Beaches. it's, it's it's Pearl Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> what spoiled? Oh, Ooh, Eric, as Eric, uh, every Friday night pearl necklace. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. I know what that means. Don't think I can't read between those lines. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many lines to read <laughs> between. Um, so, oh. um, so next time on the history continues, we are back with a pint-sized killer, aren't we? Finally, I believe. And we'll be sober. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be been, totally it's been, sober. It's been a long time coming, like Eric, um, and we'll be fine. That's because I'm, I'm an excellent lover. Is it? I honestly did not think it was going to get this bizarre. Seriously, well, I didn't. Well, but I tell you what's really bizarre. Right. I didn't press it the record did. button. No, I did really, but um, so. <laughs> Do you want? Ooh, what are we playing out? What are we playing out with, Eric? Well, um, if you play out with what I suggested, it is yes, wonderful, wonderful new romantic band Japan, and they had a song called Halloween from their album Quiet Life. Yeah, and I've done, <clears throat> I've inserted some um, inserted ooh, some um, dialogue from Buster Rhymes and Nathan Johnson at the start of the track, and ooh. then you're free to do whatever you want after that. Okay, well, we might have a little... I'm sure you've got some Susie or Creatures-esque type of music you want to put in after it. Uh, well, I think I've probably done that before, haven't I? Well, you, you used Halloween by Susie and the Banshees last year, and I used it in the intro to this podcast, so... Okay, well, I, I'll leave Unless it with, a, the, with yeah. that, but I'm sure there, there was something that I was going to I was gonna stick in, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll, 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 let's play out and find out what it is, so... Um, thank you for listening. If you've made it this far, thank two you. hours, 20 minutes uh, into the uh, Hysteria Continues Drunk Cast. Normally, we are not drunk. Um, normally, we are very well, professional. Well, normally, myself, Jos uh, Joseph and Nathan aren't drunk. Yes, that's true. I'm not drunk normally. But it's you're 10 o'clock in the morning, isn't it? 11 o'clock in the morning. Of course I wouldn't be drunk. Well, yeah, you're, you're hungover usually. Yeah. Hungover. That's a different thing. Eric, isn't it? Yeah, but it still means you've got an alcohol problem. You're kind of like Estelle from Happy Birthday to Me. Oops, have I said too much? I think you might have done. I think you might have done. Who knows? Hopefully we might one day do a commentary for that. Who knows? Maybe that could happen. Who knows? Like, like today. But, uh, or yesterday. But um, no, today, wasn't it? No, anyway, let's, um, let's carry on. So um, let's play out with some Japan, which is like, the most interesting people in pop. In 1980, they are the most interesting people in pop. They're fantastic. Do you know who likes Japan? Amanda Reyes. So, Amanda, this is for you. Well, normally, normally we'd say thank you for listening, but sorry that you had to listen to this. <laughs> if you made you're this all, far, then you are a number based. one fan of the history continues. So, we're all going to bed, yeah. going to wake up with black lips, and um, only. Well, actually, I don't know if we're going to work tomorrow, but I know Eric does. And... I have to go to work tomorrow, and it's going to be a 12 hour day. Oh. You've only got yourself to blame. Have fun. It won't be the, I'm going to be the... asleep in my comfy, comfy bed. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Um, you're going to yeah. be sleeping in your cum. No. What? <laughs> Eric, won't be the first long stretch you've had, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to be at work till midday, so surely my hangover will have, have dissipated by then. 
Exactly. You're Irish. You can just work through it. So, <sighs> so I wish I was more Irish than I was because I'm going to be. You said you're quarter English. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm a quarter. I am a quarter English. Because well, I remember when I met you, and I said, uh, "Have you got an English in you?" And you said, "You said no." And I said, "Would you like some?" But and you were lying, weren't you? <laughs> you? You got you got a quarter English in you. I have a quarter English in me. You do. So, yes, are you saying your penis is only a quarter in length? Well, exactly. No, no. I, I didn't no, think that it's, through. It's <laughs> I didn't twelve think that. inches, baby. <laughs> 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 Let's do end to this. The, do you want to put the webcam on again? No. <laughs> oh, well, it's not, not again. Let's finish it before it starts. Come on, let's finish it. Okay, so let's say goodbye to the people. Finally, goodbye, come on. Bye, people. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for listening. And uh, in the words of Buster Rhymes, thank you for motherfucking listening, you motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. Get your ass in the goddamn kitchen, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, motherfucker, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> mm.